सो हे स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू वितांतो नेट इंग्लिश दिस इज बसवराज आई एम योर बायोलॉजी मैथ्स टीचर आई होप ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू आर सेफ साउंड एंड डूइंग एक्सट्रीमली वेल इन लाइफ सो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल बी डूइंग द द सेकंड चैप्टर द सेकंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर फ्रॉम द प्लांट फिजियोलॉजी दैट्स राइट फ्रॉम द एंटायर ऑफ प्लांट फिजियोलॉजी दिस इज द सेकंड चैप्टर फर्स्ट फोटोसिंथेसिस इन हायर प्लांट्स देन एंड डस्टेड वी डेड every single concept every single question every single line of ncert was covered in there but today we'll be doing respiration plants completely students i'll be teaching you the entire of glycolysis electron transport chain krebs cycle in detail so before we start let's wait for couple of minutes for everyone to join good evening each and every one of you hello hello divya hello everyone good evening each and every one of you let's wait a couple of minutes for everyone to join while we wait as usual in my class while we wait for everyone to join i ask you a simple question right the simple question for today is let's see which question should i ask so students how many of you know what is glycolysis hello ravindrani hello everyone so how many of you know what is glycolysis what just the name you might have heard it in your uh, read in your books you might have heard it while your pair uh, your teachers talking about it you might have heard when your friends were talking about it anything anyone knows what is glycolysis so my question here is which cell in the body listen carefully the question which cell in human body where only and only glycolysis take place nothing else only and only glycolysis take place students if you do not know the answer do not worry because in today's class in today's class i will be teaching you all the way from the basics very basics that is what is the meaning of respiration all the way from the basics to the advanced level that is by the end of today's class and by the end of today's session you will be able to solve every single previous year question from this chapter that is my prop promise to all of you let me see the chat right now one second students let me see the chat one second the chat is not visible here yes One second, students. I'm not able to see the chat for some reason, so I'm adjusting the chat a little here. So, students, tell me which cell of the body, which cell in your entire human body, where only and only glycolysis take place? While you answer the question, let's wait a couple of minutes. Okay. Good evening, each and every one of you. Good evening. Yes, in complete breakdown of glucose takes place in glycolysis. Yes. Hello, Gautam. Hello, Teju. so the answer is your red blood cells the answer is red blood cells let me change the color the answer is red blood cells in the red blood cells right rbc because of the concave nature because it has to carry more oxygen it only has the cytoplasm most of the organelles has been completely been removed right because of the accommodation for the hemoglobin so if there is no mitochondria and if there is no mitochondria there is no krebs cycle if there is no krebs cycle there is no electron transport chain so in your cells like rbc red blood cells only and only glycolysis takes place okay it's red blood cells so good evening each and every one of you so can we start everyone i need josh in the chat i need energy in the chat because students trust me this is a very very easy chapter very easy chapter but the questions the questions which you can expect here the level of questions is going to be extremely high so don't worry in today's class i have questions amazing questions for today's class and i'll be also solving them and i'll be showing you what are the questions you can expect in your neat 2024 so students can i get some josh in the chat can i can i see some energy in the chat if you want yes i want hearts fire thumbs up everything in the chat and i will start today's amazing class that is respiration in plants yes i see the energy now come on i need more energy in the chat because students trust me this is the chapter which can make you a topper or a dropper in your entire plant physiology right there are so many questions which come every year which actually makes a lot of difference so before i start today's class i want each and every one of you to like the video share the session and also subscribe to the channel so one of one such question is right here let's see how many of you can solve such questions 
everyone in the chat the duration of class is going to be at least 2 hours today minimum of 2 hours maximum of 3 hours we will not exceed more than 3 hours today that is my guarantee i wanted to keep it short today so students there is a small question here in lactic acid fermentation the final electron acceptor i asked this question in my telegram channel i asked this question in my telegram channel the final electron acceptor in your lactic acid fermentation can anyone in the chat tell me some of you answered this question but do not worry if you do not know such questions today in today's class you will be able to solve everything because such questions are a little conceptual they are not a direct question but after today's class after today's class you will be able to solve such type of conceptual questions so the answer here is your pyruvic acid or also called as your pyruvate pyruvate or pyruvic acid which is the first and the last electron acceptor in the case of your lactic acid fermentation lactic acid fermentation so students trust me i will be teaching you complete detailed like complete detailed analysis I'll, I'll be teaching you glycolysis no tricks i'll tell you how exactly the function happens i'll also be telling you each and every step with the help of diagrams so students can we start the class can we start today's class i want green hearts in the chat i want green hearts in the chat i want fire in the chat and i will start today's class everyone i see a lot of less students i want everyone to share the session right now everyone share the session bring 10 more of your friends bring 10 more of your friends bring more people because this is a class which will make a difference okay students this is a telegram channel you can join a telegram channel by scanning this code on this telegram channel every single notes of mine will be available to you okay so this is your super six series we are here right now respiration plants friday 6 pm sharp we are starting respiration plants tomorrow we have human health and disease by gopikama okay so the entire chapter you do today We'll be starting off with respiration, glycolysis, anaerobic, aerobic respiration, oxidative decarboxylation. That is your link reaction, Krebs cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, electron transport chain. Then we'll be doing respiration of your fats and proteins. That is nothing but your amphiboic pathway. We'll be solving that. Then we'll be doing your different pathways. And finally, I'll be telling you respiratory quotient. Finally, I'll be teaching you respiratory question. Entire chapter, one shot. Let's go. Can we start? Everyone, I see 30 people now. We have increased the count here. So can we start? What is respiration? Students, let me start the class by telling you a basic difference. Right? A basic difference between breathing and respiration. Can anyone in the chat tell me what is the basic difference between breathing as well as respiration? Students, you need to know one thing. Breathing is more of a physical process, right? Breathing is a more of a physical process. You take in oxygen, inhale, exhale. That is breathing. But what is respiration? Respiration is more of a chemical process. Yes, everyone can tell me respiration is more of a... Yes, sir, respiration is a chemical process. So I'll teach you basic now. Let's go to even more basic. We have heard, right? We know from your class six, right? from your class six, from your class seventh, class eight, nine, ten, we have been learning that when we breathe in, when we breathe, we take oxygen inside. Yes, all of us know we breathe in. This is your cell. We breathe in oxygen. Yes. Now what happens with oxygen? When we breathe in the oxygen, there is food which is coming inside. The food is also coming inside a cell. This is a cell. When we breathe in, oxygen is entering each and every cell. Yes, sir. Oxygen is entering each and every cell. The food which we eat is also entering a cell. Now, this oxygen right here, this oxygen right here completely oxidizes the food. Yes, basic sir, we have been learning from class 10th life process chapter that the oxygen here reacts with food, it oxidizes the food and it produces the energy. Yes, basic difference, basic knowledge, all of us know this. 
whenever we eat food we get energy yes we eat food we get the energy students this energy is trapped in a form of ATP all of us know this basic this is basics of respiration which all of you have been learning now I'll tell you a class 11 definition the class 11 definition is nothing but respiration is a chemical process in which a complex substance everyone in the chat should tell me a complex substance complex substance is broken down for example the food which we take in this food right here can be a biomolecule what kind of biomolecule sir it can be a carbohydrate proteins and fats right for example this is a carbohydrate can anyone in the chat tell me a simple carbohydrate for example this can be a glucose yes glucose is made up of six carbon molecules so in respiration a complex substance or a complex substrate such as your glucose breaks down that is the carbon bound is the carbon the CC bound the CC bond is completely broken down a complex substance is broken down into a simple substance simple substance when this is happens when this happens what is the release when the complex substance is broken down into a simple substance energy is released yes sir energy is released now is this a catabolic process or anabolic process yes is this a catabolic process or anabolic process this right here is a classic example of your catabolic process yes a complex substance is broken down to simple substance this is a classic example of your catabolic process let me erase all this and write down what is respiration what we learned till now respiration is a chemical process yes sir all of you we know now respiration is a chemical process yes sir respiration is a chemical process in respiration a complex substance like your glucose is broken down a complex substance a complex substance is broken down to produce energy and the energy is trapped in the form of a t p clear till now the respiration is said to be a catabolic process catabolic process yes it's a catabolic process now i told you here energy is released yes sir energy is released now is this an exothermic reaction or a endothermic reaction everyone in the chat tell me this is a exothermic reaction this is a exothermic reaction exothermic reaction so all of us now has a basic idea yes all of us have a basic idea about your respiration now are you with me everyone can everyone in the chat tell me everyone knows what is the basic knowledge about respiration if this concept is clear i want thumbs up in the chat because this is a direction we are going in the today's class from all the way from the basics i'll be taking you to the advanced concepts ready everyone ready is everyone ready for the next concept in the chat everyone should tell me now the next concept which your NCRD talks about the next concept your NCRD talks about is respiratory substrate students I told you I told you before when we take in food we get energy yes when we eat food we obtain the energy so can I tell can I tell this respiratory substrate is nothing it is nothing but the food you take in it is nothing but the food you eat for example for example, in the carbohydrates, the glucose which we take inside our body, that is a substrate substrate. Glucose, which, which is a type of carbohydrate, yes, that is a respiratory substrate. What about fats? Yes, sir, fats are also respiratory substrates. What about proteins? Yes, sir, proteins are also your respiratory substrates. What about certain organic acids? Yes, there are certain organic acids which can be used as your respiratory substrate. So what is a respiratory substrate? Respiratory substrate is a substrate which is used in respiration. 
that's all respiratory substrate is a substrate which is used in respiration now in the chat gautam is telling me exothermic catabolic reaction which includes release of energy is called as respiration exactly that is respiration so what is respiratory substrate respiratory substrate is nothing but your food such as your carbohydrates fats proteins or certain organic acids that is your respiratory substrate the substrate which is used in your respiration now can anyone in the chat tell me what about sir what about minerals sir what about minerals can we include them in respiratory substrates absolutely not your minerals vitamins water and certain hormones hormones all of these are not included in your respiratory substrates students this was a previous year neat question they asked you directly they gave you four options they gave you four options and they asked you which is not a respiratory substrate they gave you certain examples here and they gave certain examples here you had to choose which is not a respiratory substrate one of the option was minerals so students remember minerals vitamins water and hormones they are not a respiratory substrate clear is everyone clear on this topic can we go to the next students i know this chapter is little some of the students find it boring but students trust me this is one of the interesting chapters i love this chapter so can we go to the next concept one by one we'll tackle every concept one by one every single line of ncrt i'll include every single concept which is given you in ncrt one by one i will teach you today okay now the next one how can we talk about energy how can we talk about energy and not include atp yes we cannot one second students the mic is falling so i told you i told you whenever there is whenever there is respiration there is release of energy yes sir there is a release of energy and this energy right whenever there is respiration there is release of energy now this energy is very large too much of energy our body cannot handle such large quantity of energy so what happens in your body is this energy is step wise this is very important right students write down this this energy is step wise converted to atp it is step wise converted to atp now when i say step wise can anyone in the chat give me an example for step wise conversion the answer to that is glycolysis remember students glycolysis is a 10 step process it is a 10 step process every single step every single step there is conversion of energy and in certain steps in certain steps we form atp that is the importance of atp and atp is also called as your energy currency of the cell yes atp is called as energy currency of the cell i'll tell you in a while why it is called as energy currency of the cell wait a minute for that now before that i want everyone to understand how the atp formation happens i told you during the oxidation of food whenever there is oxidation of food energy is released yes sir during oxidation of food energy is released using that energy listen to me very carefully using that energy we have this molecule called as adp adp adenosine adenosine di di new diphosphate to this adenosine diphosphate using this energy we add a phosphate to it adp gets converted to your a t that is extra phosphate is added repeat again extra phosphate is added using the energy and this bond can you see this the energy is stored in that bond and whenever whenever our body requires the energy this bond is broken whenever our body requires energy this bond is broken right here and when this bond is broken the energy is released again think of it in a like a example as you capture the energy and you store it in the bond there and every single time you require the energy that bond is completely broken and the energy is released and the energy is released clear now 
I'll tell you why is it called as the energy currency of the cell. Now students, so your parents work. Yes, your parents are working. Some, in some cases your dad is working, in some cases your mom is working. In some cases both are working. Okay. So when they work, they get the money. Yes, when the parents work or when you will be working in future, you get the money. Yes, we get the money. But students remember that whenever the money is sent to your bank account, from the bank account, you take the money out. The money is in the form of ATP. Every single time you go out with your parents, right? Every single time you go out with your parents, you go to a shop, you buy chocolates, you go to a restaurant, you eat food. What do your parents do? They take out the money. They give the money. Similarly, in your body, the entire energy is stored as money. For example, the, in your body, the entire energy is stored as ATP. Whenever there is requirement, whenever there is requirement, the ATP is broken, the energy is released out. That is the that is why it is called as energy currency of the cell. Every single time there is a requirement in the body, the currency is given. What is the currency? ATP is the currency. ATP is given, and you a body takes the ATP, breaks the ATP, and energy is released. But what does this NADH and FADH? Sir, I do not understand the concept of NADH and FADH. Think of NADH and FADH as the check. Think of NADH and FADH as a check. What do you do with the check? You take the check, you go to the bank, you deposit there. Once you give the check in the bank, they give you the money. Yes. What is the money? Money is nothing but your ATP. So every single time you deposit check in the bank, they give you the money. Every single time you deposit NADH or FADH, you get ATP. You get ATP. So remember students, NADH and FADH is made up of ATP. It provides you ATP. Similarly, how you go to the bank, you provide the check, they give you the money. Similarly, in your body, NADH and FADH is broken down to produce ATPs. Don't worry about the number of ATPs. I'll be telling you exactly how many numbers of ATPs are generated in your Krebs cycle as well as electron transport chain. Till now, is it clear? Everyone in the chat will tell me, till now is the concept of energy currency clear? I know we are going towards the building of the concept. We are going towards the main concept that is respiration. But before we go to the main concept, I want all of you to understand certain basics like this. Okay. Now next basic concept which is given in your NCRT everyone. This basic concept is given in your NCRT. What is the difference between autotropes and heterotropes? Right? What is the difference between autotropes and heterotropes? Can anyone in the chat tell me what is the difference? First, all of us know we always been learning autotropes prepare their own food. Yes, sir. Autotropes prepare their own food. Heterotropes depend on autotropes. Yes, sir. But can you tell a new definition, sir? Can we understand in a better way? Yes, you can. Students, remember I told you, I drew a cell before. In this cell, I told you, oxygen is coming from outside. Food is coming from outside. Food is coming from outside. And whenever th this is happening, energy is being generated. Yes, energy is being generated. This energy is stored in the form of ATP. Yes, it is stored in the form of ATP. But students, remember, all of us know your autotropes are green plants. Can the green plants prepare their own food? Yes. Where does it happen? The photosynthesis happens in your chloroplast. All of us know that. In the dark reaction, in the dark reaction, your glucose is produced. But here I told you food comes from outside. So this statement is completely wrong for your plants. For your plants, can I call? Can I tell this one line? In case of your autotropes, the food does not come from outside. In fact, the food is generated inside. The food itself is produced inside the cell. And similarly, inside the cell, the same food is broken down to produce the energy. This is the actual meaning of autotropes. 
Now, what is the meaning of heterotrophs? Similarly, in heterotrophs, the oxygen is coming. The food is actually coming from outside. In your heterotrophs, the food is coming from outside. But in the case of autotrophs, the food is being prepared inside. So, can I tell plants have autotropic cells and your heterotrophs have heterotropic cells? Now, I'll ask you a simple question. Can every part of the plant, can every part of the plant do photosynthesis? The answer is obviously no, sir. Only the green parts, but the, only the green beautiful parts of the leaves can do photosynthesis. So, what about roots? If this is your plant, if this is your plant, in the leaves the photosynthesis is happening. In your root, the root also needs to do respiration. The roots also need to generate the energy. But how do they get the food? The answer is, which is given in your NCRT, is nothing but translocation. The food which is prepared here, the food which is prepared here, the glucose which is prepared here is transported to the roots called as translocation. Sir, why am I telling you all this? Because students, if you open your NCRT right now, Keep your NCRT next to you. If you open your book right now, you will see everything written as such. I am following every line of NCRT today. Okay? Now, that is the difference between autotropes and heterotropes. Now, the next concept. The next concept which is given in your NCRT is the types of respiration. The types of respiration. Sir, Gautam is asking in some... In NCRT, all plant cells not photosynthesis, but cells containing chloroplast is in superficial, superficial layer carry photosynthesis. So superficial layer means the superficial layer means the leaves, some stem. Students remember NCRT is linked superficial layer. The meaning of superficial layer is the, the leaves and the herbaceous stem, the green stem, the green stem. If you read your NCRT, the NCRT is telling the superficial layers. The meaning of superficial layer is the green stem and the leaves wherever the chlorophyll is present. Okay? Can we go to the next concept? Can we start the... Any doubt till now? Let me take up the doubts, everyone. Let me take up the doubts. Any doubt till now, you can ask me right now, students, because this is the basics. We are building up the foundation. We are building up the energy for glycolysis. All these are chodo chodo basic cute concepts which will help you in the entire picture later on. Any doubt till now? Any doubt till now students you can ask me right now. Any doubt? No doubt? Let's go ahead. Now let me talk about types of respiration. The types of respiration is mainly based on mainly based on utilization. Utilization of Oxygen. Yes, sir. The entire respiration can be divided into based on the presence or absence of oxygen. Yes. Can I divide into two parts? Can I divide into two parts? For example, wherever the oxygen is absent, wherever in the respiration the oxygen is absent, can I call it anaerobic respiration? Anaerobic respiration in aerobic respiration there is complete absence of oxygen yes but where does this take place students remember this point here the anaerobic respiration only and only happens in the cytoplasm only and only happens in the cytoplasm clear now students listen to me very carefully in the case of wherever oxygen is present it is called as aerobic respiration, aerobic respiration, the aerobic respiration, aerobic respiration happens in the presence of oxygen. Yes, sir. This is the basic knowledge. Why are you telling all the students? Remember, if the basics is not strong, where the foundation is not strong, the building won't last. Okay. So this is basic requirement. Now one more point here in aerobic respiration. In the case of your aerobic respiration, it takes place in the both, that is cytoplasm plus the mitochondria, plus the mitochondria, plus the mitochondria. 
Because students remember, in the case of aerobic respiration, we have something called as link reaction, also called as oxidative carboxylation. We also have Krebs cycle, which takes place in the mitochondria. We also have electron transport chain, which also happens in your mitochondria. So students, remember this point, fix it in your brain. In case of aerobic respiration, it happens both in the case of cytoplasm as well as mitochondria. But in the case of anaerobic respiration, it only and only happens in the case of cytoplasm. Is that point clear? Is that point clear everyone? Now I will divide. Now I will do a more division in anaerobic respiration. In your NCRT, if you open your NCRT right now, under anaerobic respiration, we have two types of fermentation. What is the two types of fermentation? One is called as alcoholic fermentation. One is called as alcoholic fermentation, which happens, which happens in your yeast cell, which happens in your yeast cell as well as certain funguses yeast cell that is the formation of alcohol we make beer whiskey rum and everything that is because of the alcoholic fermentation but we also have something called as lactic acid fermentation lactic acid fermentation remember it is a type of anaerobic respiration it happens in the cytoplasm it happens in cytoplasm but where does it happen it happens lactic acid fermentation takes place in your muscle cells as well as lactic acid bacteria it happens in your muscle cells as well as lactic acid bacteria is the point clear till here i believe everything is basics all of you know till now all of you know this concepts now let's talk about aerobic respiration aerobic respiration i already told you aerobic respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen Yes, sir. In aerobic respiration, it takes place in the presence of oxygen. In case of aerobic respiration, the complete oxidation. Listen, listen to me very carefully. In the case of aerobic respiration, the complete oxidation of your glucose takes place. Complete oxidation. See here, we have 6 carbon here and we have the 6 CO2 here. The complete oxidation takes place in the case of aerobic respiration. And byproduct of aerobic respiration is your energy, CO2 and water. Sir, what about your alcoholic ferment fermentation? Students, remember one point here very carefully. The alcoholic fermentation always results in incomplete oxidation. Always results in incomplete oxidation of glucose always incomplete oxidation of glucose is the point clear is the point still here clear students i'm telling you just the basics now this is the just basics we will go towards the higher concepts now okay now when we talk about aerobic respiration when we talk about aerobic respiration we mainly talk about it is a multi-step process yes sir it is a multi-step process because i told you in the starting the energy is very large in order to capture the energy we have to divide it in a multiple step wise for example inside your cytoplasm inside the cytoplasm where glycolysis takes place the conversion of glucose into pyruvate the conversion of glucose into pyruvate takes in 10 different steps it takes in 10 different step that is glycolysis is a 10 different step process Similarly, in your aerobic respiration, once the glycolysis is over, the pyruvate is sent inside the mitochondria. Students, this is just the outline. I'll be teaching you in detail later on. Inside your cell, in the cytoplasm, glucose is converted to pyruvate. This pyruvate is sent inside the mitochondria. Inside the mitochondria, Inside the mitochondria, we have oxidative decarboxylation which is happening, which is also called as your link reaction. Inside the same matrix of mitochondria, we have the Krebs cycle which is taking place in the mitochondrial matrix. Inside the inner membrane, in the inner membrane, we have electron transport chain. So students, remember, 
the entire sequence of the chapter. The entire sequence of the chapter is the glucose is converted to pyruvate. Converted to pyruvate, and this is called as glycolysis. Glycolysis. Pyruvate is then converted to your acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA, this is called as your link reaction. Called as link reaction, also called as oxidative decarboxylation. Then the acetyl CoA enters your Krebs cycle. After Krebs cycle, we have the electron transport chain, the last part of the glucose conversion. This is going to be the entire flow for the chapter and also how the glucose is undergoing different changes inside a cell. Clear? Till now, if this is clear, I will go to the next concept. That is the, where do plants get the respiratory substrate from? Is the basis clear till now? I believe is this part is clear. Everyone in the chat should tell me thumbs up in the chat. Fire hearts everyone. If you are following the basic things I am telling you till now. The most basic things. This is not advanced. The most basic things which you need to know in order to understand the chapter. This is the summary of the chapter. Okay. Can we go to the next concept? I am teaching you concept by concept which is given in your NCRT only. Okay. Are you connected with me if you till now? Are we connected? Are you following everything? If not, if you have any doubt till now, please ask me right now because students, this is going to be very slow. I'll be connecting the dots one by one. I'll be connecting the doubts, uh, dots one by one. Okay. The next question is, where do plants get the respiratory substrate from? I told you we need respiratory substrates such as your glucose, carbohydrates, which is a glucose, proteins as well as fats but where do plants get it from the answer is very simple i already told you plants do photosynthesis yes sir plants do photosynthesis if they are doing photosynthesis the substrate is produced inside the cell the substrate here the glucose is produced inside the cell with the help of dark reaction that one question clear the next question the next question which i will ask all of you do plants breathe? Can anyone chat tell me? Do plants breathe first? I'll wait for two minutes. I'll wait for like 30 seconds or two minutes. I'll wait for 30 seconds. Do plants breathe? Everyone? Do plants breathe? The answer is actually no. The answer, the technical answer is no. Plants do not breathe. But do plants require the oxygen? Yes. Plants do not breathe, but yes, they require oxygen. Plants do not breathe, but they actually require the oxygen. Now, what could be the real reason? Why do plants require oxygen? Obviously, to oxidize the food. But where does this oxygen come from? Can, can anyone in the chat tell me where do this oxygen? I told you plants need oxygen, but how is the oxygen entering the plant? For example, we humans, we breathe, right? Yes, sir, we breathe. That is ah, a fresh oxygen went inside. But how does the oxygen enter the plant? Can anyone chat tell me how does the oxygen enter the plant? The answer is very simple. The first part is your stomata. The first part is your stomata. Yes, sir. Stomata, which is present on your leaf surface. On the surface of the leaf, there is stomata. With the help of the stomata, whenever there is the stomata is open, there is exchange of gases. Yes, sir. There is exchange of gases. That's how oxygen can enter into the cell. Now, what about, tell me, in your uh, stem, can plants respire? Can plants take in oxygen through the stem? Tell me first. Tell me first, can plants also take in oxygen from the stem, from the stem region, can they take in the oxygen? The answer is yes. If you know the secondary growth, if you know the chapter anatomy of flowering plants, 
in your secondary growth we learnt like a, we learnt about a structure where the outer epidermis where the outer epidermis which has parenchyma cells the outer epidermis which has parenchyma cells which rupture open where the parenchyma cells rupture open which makes a structure called as lenticels which makes a structure called as lenticels which are present on the bark the lenticels are present on the bark of the stem and with the help of lenticels plants can also breathe plants can also take in the oxygen they do not breathe they take in the oxygen but if you know the photosynthesis in higher plants chapter i told you oxygen is a byproduct of your photosynthesis so plants can technically also use that oxygen also yes sir plants can use that oxygen also that is the next concept that is why plants do not require a special organ or organs for example humans me you we have lungs lungs can help in breathing but plants have lungs do plants have lungs can anyone chat tell me do plants have the special structure called as lungs the answer is no plants do not have any lungs why the answer is very simple because the plants has very less requirement the answer is very simple in your ncrt if you open the ncrt the ncrt says clearly one line every single part of the plant the reason why they don't have special organ is because every single every part every part of plant can take care can take care can take care of itself that is every part that is leaf photosynthesis stem stem also has lenticels if you also know the root hair can also do respiration root hair can also take in some amount of oxygen yes every part can take care of itself the second point i want all of you to focus is that is very less requirement see students you should know by now the most of the oxygen the most of the energy a human spends is when we walk around right when we walk around we do jogging when we do move when we show locomotion whenever we show locomotion which requires a lot of energy but plants plants do not show locomotion so it requires oxygen requirement is very very less and if you also know during the photosynthesis during the photosynthesis oxygen is released yes oxygen is released so plants will use the same oxygen yes that is the reason they do not require a special organ and the third point the third point why they don't require is because most of the oxygen right most of the oxygen diffuses by diffusion see if you know if this is a stem if this is a stem the middle part the middle part of the stem is usually dead yes sir middle part of a stem middle part of a plant is usually dead clear and kaima usually on the bark we have the lenticels yes we have the lenticels here so plants can actually transport the oxygen by diffusion by diffusion by diffusion by diffusion clear that is the reason plants do not require any type of any type of special organ in the case of plants students are you following till now i know this is a little dry topic till now we are just doing the basics but students remember your ncrt is also going in a similar direction your ncrt is also going in a similar direction and i am bound to ncrt okay the next concept which ncrt talks about is combustion and respiration what are the similarities what are the similarities between combustion and respiration all of us know what is combustion combustion is where we have the fire is getting ignited that is combustion both in the case of respiration as well as combustion both in the case of respiration and combustion can i tell oxygen is required yes sir both cases oxygen is required can i also tell both in the combustion as well as respiration both in the case of combustion as well as respiration 
there is release of energy there is release of energy yes sir there is release of energy there is release of heat yes sir both in the case of combustion as well as respiration there is release of heat and this both in the case energy is released and the energy in the case of your respiration is trapped as ATP that is the only difference here that is the only difference between respiration as well as combustion in the case of respiration energy is trapped in the form of ATP clear can we solve some questions now with the basics which we just learned can we solve some questions the first question here we go which of the following is the site of cellular respiration in plants where does the cellular respiration happens in the plants can anyone in the chat tell me the answer to this question i will give you 10 seconds 10 seconds to answer this question first 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 the answer is b we know in the case of plants respiration can take place both in the case of cytoplasm as well as mitochondria because plants are aerobic in nature plants perform aerobic respiration and if you just you just learned in the case of aerobic respiration it takes place both in cytoplasm as well as mitochondria the next question which of the following statements which of the following statements is or are correct with respect to the ATP molecule? There are multiple statements here. I want you to tell me which is the correct statement here. I'll give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The time's up. Students, if you know does it has no specialized role in case of plants that is a wrong statement we know in the case of plants ATP also plays a very crucial role for capturing the energy it stores energy yes sir it is correct it provides energy for the metabolic reactions yes every single store energy is in the form of ATP whenever there is a requirement for example if the plant has to do transportation Every single process requires the energy. Yes, this is also correct. So answer is D, both B and C are correct. Next question. What is the correct order of stages of cellular respiration? In what sequence does the oxygen, sorry, in what sequence does the glucose gets converted? You have 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. It is your glycolysis first. Second is your Krebs cycle. Then we have the electron transport chain. That is the answer to that question. The next question is your first. Which of the following is the most common substrate for respiration? They are asking you which is the most favorite most common respiratory substrate i'll give you 10 seconds 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 times up it is your carbohydrates carbohydrate is the most favorite most common substrate for respiration clear now students before we go to the glycolysis, before we go to the glycolysis, I want you to understand one simple basic concept. The most basic concept which you will be understanding in the next one or two hours. For the next two hours, this is the most crucial topic for you. That is, what is oxidation? What is reduction? What is oxidation? Oxidation is nothing but loss of electrons or loss of protons that is H plus that is oxidation what is reduction students please write down this one this can get very confusing because I'll be telling you a lot of oxidation reduction now onwards okay what is oxidation loss of electrons is called as or loss of electrons or loss of hydrogen or loss of protons is called as oxidation 
Similarly, gain of electrons, gaining of electrons or gaining of hydrogen or gaining of protons is called as reduction. Please write it down. I'm going to move aside, write down this and we will start now. Students, we will start the first step in all types of respiration. We will start right now the first amazing step in all of respiration that is glycolysis. Can we start? Can we start students? Students, last 50 minutes, last 50 minutes we covered the first two pages of your NCRT. Just two pages, last 50 minutes. Why? Why did I waste? Not waste. Why did I use 50 minutes of your life to explain the first two pages? The answer is very simple. If you want to, if you want to understand the glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, the last 50 minutes was the most important part of this chapter, which every single aspirant skips. And this is the most important part. I told you till now. So can we start the first step one? So can we start students? Yes, Shiva, I will be teaching anatomy of flowering plants. Don't worry, I'll be teaching that also. So can we start now the first step? I want everyone in the chat. Syllabus will be covered. Don't worry, before your... Very soon the syllabus will be covered. Don't worry. So can we start students? The first step in respiration. Now fr from here onwards, I want you to focus 1001%, 1000%. There is nothing called a thousand percent, but I want everyone to focus hundred percent now. So can I get you hundred percent attention now? Can I get you hundred percent attention for the next part that is glycolysis? Trust me students, after this talk, uh, after the next 20 minutes, you will not have any doubt in glycolysis. Every single question will be on your fingertips. So can we start? Can we start everyone? I want thumbs up. I want more Josh. I'm not seeing any Josh. I am not seeing any Josh, I am disappointed. I want to see more like... Students, you know the rule. You know the rule, in my class I want more energy. I want more Josh from your side. More hearts, more fire, more lighting. And then we will start now glycolysis. Okay? I hope till now you have understood everything. I hope till now every single concept has been clear. Amazing. So let's start now the first step. Can we start the first step in your Can we start the first step in your entire process that is your glycolysis? Everyone in the chat, can we start what is glycolysis? Now, what is the meaning of glycolysis? Students first. Glyco means sugar. Glyco means sugar. Lysis means to break. So in your glycolysis, in the glycolysis we are breaking the sugar that is we are breaking the sugar in your glycolysis now can i call lysis also as oxidation lysis can also be called as oxidation so in your glycolysis we are completely breaking down glucose the next point i want everyone to understand is the location where does the glycolysis take place any smart friends in the chat who can tell me where does the glycolysis takes place? Your entire process of glycolysis takes place in your cytoplasm. In your cytoplasm. The next point I want everyone to understand is the number of steps or number of enzymes. Number of steps in glycolysis. In total there are 10 steps in your glycolysis. Yes, there are 10 steps in your glycolysis. The next point I want everyone to understand is in the case of plants in the case of plants plants do not store the food in the form of glucose plants actually store the food in the form of sucrose in plants the food is stored in the form of sucrose so in case of plants in the case of plants, the sucrose needs to be get converted. Yes, students. In the case of plants, the sucrose needs to get converted to your glucose plus fructose. 
In the case of plants, the sucrose is converted to glucose and fructose in the presence of an enzyme called as invertase. In the presence of enzyme called as invertase. The next point I want all of you to understand for glycolysis is this is a partial oxidation. This glycolysis, the entire process of glycolysis, the entire process of glycolysis is nothing but a partial oxidation. It is a partial oxidation. Now, what do you mean by partial oxidation? If you notice, in the entire glycolysis, there is no evolution, there is no production of CO2. In the entire glycolysis, there is no production of CO2. CO2 is never released. CO2 is never released. Only energy is released. So can I tell this is a partial oxidation. The glycolysis is a partial oxidation method. Yes sir, it's a partial oxidation method. The next point I want everyone to write down here is the glycolysis. Does this happen only in aerobes? Does this happen only in anaerobes? Does this happen only in plants, animals, prokaryotes, eukaryotes? Where does this happen? The answer is everything. The process of glycolysis takes place in your aerobes. It takes place in aerobes. It takes place in anaerobes. It takes place in your prokaryotes. It takes place in your eukaryotes. It takes, it also takes place in the case of your animals. It takes place in the case of plants. Every single place, this students right here, every single information which I've written here can be asked as a question. The question can be like, where does the glycolysis take place? The answer is cytoplasm. How many steps are in glycolysis? 10 steps, sir. So in the case of plants, glucose is converted to Sucrose is converted to glucose and fructose. Which enzyme is involved? Invertase is involved. That is the question. In the case of your glycolysis, is it a partial oxidation? Yes, it is a partial oxidation. It is not complete. It is not incomplete. It is a partial oxidation. Why? Because in the case of your glycolysis, there is no CO2 evolved. The next question which can come. Sir, this process of glycolysis, where does it happen? Remember students, it happens in aerobes, anaerobes, prokaryotes, eukaryotes as well as animals and plants. Every single place, glycolysis takes place. That is the beauty of glycolysis. Now one more question. The one more question is, what is the other name of glycolysis? Can anyone in the chat tell me what is the other name of glycolysis? The answer is nothing but your EMP pathway. The glycolysis is also called as your EMP pathway. This right here is a neat P by Q. This right here is a neat P by Q. This is a neat P by Q right here. It's an EMP pathway. What is the meaning of EMP? What is the meaning of EMP? This pathway was discovered by three eminent scientists. Namely, your Emden, Mayanov and Parnas. The first letter the first letter of each and every scientist. For example, E from Emden, M for Menov, and P for Parnas was taken up. And that's why it is called as EMP pathway. That is why it is called as EMP pathway. One thing, students. Let's see if I can. Clear? So, the first step. The entire glycolysis. Students, everyone should be ready now. From here, I want 100% attention. The entire glycolysis students is divided into two steps. Not two steps, two entire parts. The first part is called as what? The first part is called as your preparatory stage. In your preparatory stage, you put investment. You invest. And after investment, what do we get? We get returns. How you invest in something, you get returns. You're investing right now in your studies. What is the return? You becoming a doctor is a return. Yes, all of you will become our future doctors. That is the return you're getting. Similarly, in your glycolysis, there are two phases. One is called as preparatory stage, where we invest ATP, where we invest the energy. We also have something called as payoff stage. In the payoff stage, we get returns. We get back the energy. Okay? Can we start? The first step in glycolysis. 
the first step in glycolysis is nothing but your phosphorylation the first step in your glycolysis is nothing but phosphorylation now what is the meaning of phosphorylation phosphorylation means addition of phosphate yes phosphorylation means addition of phosphate in the first step this is your ncrt snip right here all of you can see this ncrt snip if you cannot see the ncrt snip i want you to open your book i want you to open your book keep it next to you and follow with me okay in the first step in the first step which is also phosphorylation glucose is converted to your glucose 6 phosphate i told you it is a phosphorylation meaning is what your atp students see this this is atp this atp this bond is broken apart when this bond is broken we get a free phosphate we take this phosphate and we attach it to the sixth position we take the phosphate we attach it to the sixth for sixth position that is why that is why it is called as what glucose to glucose six phosphate because this is your glucose six carbon at the sixth position we have the phosphate that is why in the first step which is a phosphorylation we are adding we are adding a phosphate from where from the atp so if you look at your ncrt see here glucose to glucose 6 phosphate one atp is consumed one atp is completely consumed in the first step and this particular step the enzyme involved is hexokinase this right here is a neat pyq this right here is a need PYQ. So students, in the first step, glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, phosphorylation, the enzyme is hexokinase, and ATP is broken down, and one phosphate is attached to the 6th position. That is why it is called as glucose 6-phosphate. Clear? Glucose 6-phosphate. With... Clear? The next one. In second step, the second step is called as isomerization students remember this in isomerization what is an isomer isomer is a two structures when the two structures have the same chemical formula but different structural formula chemistry the chemical structure is same the chemical formula is same but the structure can differ for example if you look at your glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate the chemical formula is same but if you look at the structure here we have the aldehyde here we have the ketone so in the case of your second step in case of your second step there is isomerization in your second step there is isomerization that is glucose 6-phosphate is converted to your fructose 6-phosphate glucose is converted to fructose 6-phosphate and students remember whenever there is isomerization there is no energy involvement because it's only isomerization there is no energy consumption there is no release of energy second step done second step done so where are we first step was done second step is done that is fructose 6 phosphate now the next step in the third step the third step is also a phosphorylation for example, in the third step again, similarly, we take an ATP, we break this bond and this particular ATP now, this particular phosphate, this particular phosphate attaches to the first carbon of your fructose. First carbon of your fructose. So what did we have here? We had fructose 6-phosphate because in the 6th position we had a phosphate. Now this fructose 6-phosphate gets converted to fructose one comma six bisphosphate 1 comma 6 bisphosphate why 1 comma because at the first position we have the at the first position we have the we have a phosphate and sixth position we have the phosphate this is the third step also called as rate determining step it's also called as what rate determining step so we get now fructose 6 phosphate students remember in the first step and the third step ATP is consumed we take a, we take the ATP we break the ATP we take the phosphate and we attach the phosphate in the first step phosphate is attached here in the third step phosphate is attached here second step was 
isomerization. Clear till now? Is everyone clear till now? And the enzyme involved is nothing but your phosphofructokinase. Very, very important. Very, very important. The enzyme involved is phosphofructokinase. And also remember students, the first step, the third step, and the tenth step, all these three steps are called as irreversible steps. They're called as what? Irreversible steps. Now, I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear now. The third step is clear. Now, what do we have here now till now? Glucose, one ATP was consumed. We got glucose 6-phosphate. At the sixth position, we have a phosphate. Then we had isomerization, fructose 6-phosphate. Now, after fructose 6-phosphate, we again, ATP is consumed. Phosphate is attached to the first position. We have fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. I hope till now all of you are following with me. Let's go to the next part. That is, we have done till now. Till here we have finished. Till here it is done. I hope till now here there is no confusion. Now, this is where it is important now. Your glucose or fructose, both of them are a 6 carbon molecule. Yes, they are 6 carbon molecule. But in the next step, in the next step, the glucose, or fructose, which was a 6 carbon molecule, completely divides. It completely divides into two, three carbon molecules. The first one is called as your DHAP. First one is called as DHAP, which is also called as your dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And the second part, the second part here is called as your GAP, that is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is also known as 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde. 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde. So in the fourth step, in the fourth step, the 6-carbon fructose is completely divided into two 3-carbon molecules. One is called as your DHAP, that is your dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And the second one is called as your glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, also called as 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde. I hope this is clear till now. The next point. Next point here is both your DHAP as well as your GAP or PGAL. They are isomers. If they are isomers students, can they interchange among them? Yes sir, they can interchange. So can I write, can I write interchanging among them? Yes. So in total, from here onwards, your fructose 6 bisphosphate, fructose 1 comma 6 bisphosphate gets converted to, the DHAP gets isomerized to your gap. DHAP gets isomerized to GAP from here onwards. If you look at your NCID also, from here onwards, we have the two molecules of triosphosphate, which is also called as your glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Clear? Now, till here, everything is over. Till here, we are done. So, can I tell in the end, Fructose 1 comma 6 bisphosphate is getting converted to two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. This is triphosphate is later. It is later on. Till here, we are done. Anyone has any doubt till now? Does anyone has a doubt till now here? Till here, the entire, the entire of your preparatory stage, the investment is over. I'll give you a small recap. That is. Glucose to glucose 6 phosphate, phosphorylation, hexokinase, ATP is consumed. Then we had glucose to fructose 6 phosphate, isomerization, fructose to your fructose 1 comma 6 bisphosphate, again phosphorylation, right? Phosphoructokinase, again the ATP is consumed. Now from here, from here, the 6 carbon divided into 2 carbons, the 6 carbon divided into 2 3 carbon molecules. That is your DHAP as well as your glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, this is where the game changes. This is where we are start the payoff stage. This is where we start the payoff stage. Can we start? 
Can we start the payoff stage? Now from here onwards, payoff phase starts. Now this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate undergoes oxidation. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate undergoes oxidation. Students, what is the meaning of oxidation? Oxidation means loss of electrons as well as loss of protons. Yes, sir, you told me in the starting. Oxidation means loss of protons and loss of electrons. So this particular glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, the two molecules of it, the two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate undergoes oxidation. When it undergoes oxidation, it releases the electrons. It releases the electrons, it releases the protons and it loses the energy. Clear? Now this particular electrons and protons are taken up by, they are taken up by your none other than your NAD+. This two electrons and two protons are completely taken up by your NAD+. That is nothing but your nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So they are taking up. If NAD+, if NAD+, is taking the electrons, it becomes reduced. So your NAD+, becomes reduced to NADH. Your NAD plus takes up the electrons, it gets reduced to your NADH plus H plus. That is reduction. Your glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is undergoing oxidation, it is losing electrons, but your NADH, your, sorry, your NAD plus is getting reduced and it is taking up the electrons and it is forming your NADH plus H plus. Clear? That is the fate of the electrons and protons. But what exactly happens to energy? What, is the, what happens to energy? Now this energy right here is taken up for conversion, for picking up the phosphate, the inorganic phosphate. The inorganic phosphate from the, mid, from the cytoplasm. From inorganic phosphate from the cytoplasm is picked up. And with the help of this energy, this particular phosphate joins the first carbon. It joins the first carbon. That is, which results in 1, 3, 1, 3 bisphosphoglyceric acid. Before it was just 3 phosphate. Glyceraldehyde had 3 phosphate because at the third position we had a phosphate before. Now, but after oxidation, we have what? After oxidation, we have. 1,3 bisphosphoglyceric acid. Bisphosphoglyceric acid. See, here, students, look at here. In this step to this step, what happens? Oxidation happens. Yes, oxidation is happening. So your NAD plus is getting reduced to NADH plus H plus. This particular com 3 phosphoglyceric acid is getting oxidized and it is getting converted to your 1,3 this phosphoglyceric acid. Why 1 comma 3? Because whenever there is energy release, because of the energy, one inorganic phosphate is taken and attached to the first carbon. Attached to the first carbon. That's why we have 1 comma 3 bis phosphoglyceric acid. This step is done and dusted. This step is done and dusted. That is your sixth step. That is your sixth sixth step. Clear everyone? Is everyone clear with that concept? Now next step, the seventh step. In the seventh step, what happens? In the case of your seventh step, listen very carefully. This particular bond, this high energy bond breaks open. This high energy bond completely breaks open. So we, this phosphate is released outside. And with the energy released, with the energy released, and this phosphate, this phosphate attaches to a ADP that is plus phosphate here which results in the formation of a ATP which results in the formation of a ADP to a ATP and thus 1 comma 3 bisphosphate becomes 3 phosphoglyceric acid why only 3 phosphoglyceric acid because only at the third position only at the third position we have a phosphate now we have a phosphate and whenever the high energy bond is broken up ATP is formed. Can you see here? 3, 1 comma 3 bisphosphoglyceric acid to 3 phosphoglyceric acid. One ATP formation is 
done. One eighty information is done. Now, next one, your three phosphoglyceric acid is converted to two phosphoglyceric acid. There is just exchange of a phosphate from the third position. From the third position, phosphate is sent to the second position. That is three phosphoglyceric acid is converted to two phosphoglyceric acid. Three to two. Done. That is your eighth step. That's how we get the two phosphoglyceric acid. There is any energy releasing here? There is no energy releasing here. Now this two phosphoglyceric acid. If you look, water is released out. This is your two phosphoglyceric acid. Water is released out, which converts it to phosphoenol pyruvate (PEP), which is also an intermediate of your C4 cycle. Yes, it is intermediate of your C4 cycle. Now we have what now? Two phosphoenol pyruvate. Remember, always two. After this point onwards, after this point onwards, everywhere we have double double. Everywhere we have double double. Why double double? Because of the isomerization. Okay. And the last step. In the last step, also, if you notice the high energy bond, this high energy bond is broken apart. The phosphate is released, and energy is released with the help of this phosphate and this energy. This goes and joins here again. This goes and joins here. That is, it joins to an ADP, and ADP is converted again to AT. P ATP is ATP is converted to ATP, which leaves us, which leaves us with pyruvate. So in the last step, in the last step, that is phosphoenol pyruvate is getting converted to your pyruvate or pyruvic acid. When the conversion is happening, high energy bond is broken apart, a phosphate is released, and that phosphate goes and joins with the goes and joins with the ADP, which forms the A. T P in the last step. Is the point clear till everyone? Till here is every single thing clear? Now listen to me very carefully. I'll tell you few points here now. Is the point clear? Now I'll make you write down some points. Write down these points where question can be asked. Any doubt in glycolysis? Any doubt in glycolysis till now? Any doubt in glycolysis? First ask me. See, in the end also there are two pyruvate. Everywhere it is two. From here onwards, everywhere there are two pyruvates are forming. Let me write down few points here for you. Now, the first point which they can ask you, where H two O is. Well, if you write here. Now I'll ask you a simple question, all of you. This is how the question will be asked: In which step? In which step water is released? All of you should tell me in which step water is released. Here, this step it is two PGA, two phosphoglyceric acid, two two phosphoenol pyruvate. Water is released. That can be a question. The next question can be asked: In which step NADH is formed? Can anyone in the chat tell me in which step? NADH is formed. Everyone should tell me the NADH is formed in the sixth step here, sir. In the sixth step, in the sixth step, and here, sixth step, NADH is formed. That is, your PGA is getting converted to one comma three bisphosphate. NADH is formed, sir. But where is ATP is formed? ATP is formed in your seventh step. ATP is formed here in your seventh step. This is not here. This is sixth step. ATP is formed in your seventh step as well as the tenth step. It is one second. They, they can ask you in which step the NAD is produced. I'm sorry, in which step the NAD is produced? It should be here in the sixth step. Here, NAD is produced in the sixth step. Then they will ask you directly in which step the ADP is produced. You should tell me that 
conversion of 1,3 bisphosphate to 3 phosphoglycinic acid, 1 ADP is produced. And while converting your phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvic acid, 1 ADP is produced. That's how the question can be asked. Now let's practice more questions. Can we practice more questions now? Let's practice some questions. You'll get an idea how the questions will be asked. Let's do some question practice. You will get a small idea how the questions can be asked. The first question here is, the first question here is, who discovered the pathway of breakdown of glucose in, into pyruvic acid? First, it was by none other than, none other than your Emden, Manoff and Parnas. That is why this is called as your EMP pathway. Answer is correct. The next question is, the next question is, which of the following statements is or are correct here? They have given you three st statements here. Now you should tell me in the chat which statement is correct, which statement is wrong. The first statement is glycolysis is observed in the aerobic organisms only. First statement. Second statement is sucrose is converted to two glucose molecules with the help of invertase enzyme. Second statement. The next question is Glycolysis results in the complete oxidation of glucose into pyruvic acid. Now, who can tell me which particular statement here is correct? Which statement is correct here? Fast tell me. Which statement is correct? Which statement is correct? Fast, I'll give you two. I'll give you a minute. Think and answer. Before that, uh, I'll take a, a, a doubt from Gita. Gita is asking me why will there be two molecules of everything after payoff stage? After payoff stage, students listen carefully. Here, if you look at the after payoff stage, after payoff stage, one molecule from here, one molecule from here. Because this is isomerization. Because isomerization is happening, we have two molecules of everything from here onwards. Because of isomerization, we have one molecule of this, one molecule of this, this is getting converted to, your DHAP is getting converted to your visceraldehyde 3 phosphate. That's why, that's why uh, in the payoff stage, everything is 2-2. One from here, one from here. From this stage onwards, everything is 2-2. Okay? Clear? The answer to this question is, the answer to this question is, all the statements are wrong. The answer to this question is every single statement. Uh, every single statement is wrong here. Who answered the question properly? Every single statement here is absolutely wrong. Why sir? Can you explain? Yes sir, I can explain. Glycolysis is observed in aerobic only? No. I told you in the starting. Glycolysis takes place in aerobic, anaerobic, prokaryote, eukaryote, plant cell, animal cell. So this statement is wrong. Second statement says sucrose is converted to two glucose molecules. Wrong. Because we know sucrose is converted to glucose and fructose. The last step is glu glucose is res uh, glycolysis results in the complete oxidation. No sir. Glycolysis is partial oxidation is partial oxidation so this statement is also wrong how many of you got correct how many of you got correct tell me the chart fast now be honest how many of you got it actually correct how many of you got it wrong and if you have any doubt till now if you have any doubt in any of these three ask me right now ask me right now if you have any doubt in these three statements first fast 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 Any doubt fast? Same, same, they are same. Visality had 3 phosphate, 3 phosphate, 3 phosphoglyceric acid. Other name for it. Chemical, in a chemistry, we have something called as chemical name, right? And common name. That's all. Everyone said wrong. Did anyone say wrong? <laughs> so, but do you have any doubt till now? Even if you went wrong, did you understand now? Did you understand now, everyone? Did you understand? So, students, do not make the same mistake. 
do not make the same mistake again in your examination okay do not make the same mistake in your examination now next question all intermediates in glycolysis have phosphate group attached to them yes every single intermediate has phosphate attached to them except glucose and pyruvate yes except glucose and pyruvate every single place there is a phosphate attachment is there why does the phosphorylation of glucose takes place during glycolysis simple question why is the phosphorylation happening can anyone in the ch chat tell me the answer to this question fast can anyone in the chat tell me the answer to this question why is glycolysis in glycolysis phosphorylation happening in the ninth step what is happening there is a loss of water your pep gets converted to your pyruvate why is there why is there attachment of phosphate in intermediates of your glycolysis students the concept is easy all of you can agree with me the concept is easy but the questions which you can expect is difficult okay the question which you can expect is actually difficult here which is the option here can anyone tell me which can be the option here this is a little outside your ncrt this is a little outside your ncrt but to understand the concept you need to understand this to understand the concept you should understand this the answer is very simple it is actually it is actually all of the above students i'll tell you why your glycolysis your glycolysis is happening in the cytoplasm yes sir it is happening in cytoplasm your cytoplasm is selectively permeable yes students if there is if there is no proper binding if there is no proper blockage what happens is the intermediate which is formed can actually go to the cell to make sure no intermediate leave the cell to no intermediate leave the cell membrane the phosphorylation happens whenever there is phosphate attachment it cannot go out of the cell make sense yes sir the second one is phosphorylated intermediate compounds act as energy donors yes they act as energy donors they donate energy and they help in formation of atp yes they form a help in formation of atp binding of phosphate group helps the enzyme to carry out the reaction how this particular phosphate acts as your recognition site it acts as a recognition site for the enzyme to come and attach so whenever the enzyme needs a substrate when the enzyme needs to come and join as a active site this particular phosphate will act as a active site the enzyme will come and join to it so it will help in your enzyme action so answer is actually all of the above little outside your ncrt but i want everyone to understand that clear now can everyone should write down with me everyone should write down with me the net profit ready what is the net profit in your preparatory stage in your preparatory stage is there any production of atp no sir in your preparatory stage there is no production of atp but if you remember in your first step and the third step uh, atp was consumed yes sir atp was consumed so can i write minus 2 atp minus 2 atp yes sir what about your payoff stage in your payoff stage one nadh was produced but actually was it one or two if you remember in your payoff stage everything is double yes sir in your payoff stage everything is double so can i write 2 nadh yes sir i can write 2 nadh and if you also know 1 nadh produces how many atp 1 nadh produces 3 atp 1 nadh produces 3 atp 3 into 6 3 into 2 that is your 3 to the 6 atp 6 atp produced 
or if you also know in the case of your preparatory stage there is also production of 2 ATPs yes if you look at your preparatory if you look here let me show you see here here there are two molecules so can I write two ATPs here here also there are two molecules of phosphonyl pyruvate getting converted to pyruvic acid so can I also write two here yes sir you can write two there so in total in total can I write in total can I write four ATPs yes four ATPs are you following with me four ATPs yes sir so in total what is the gr there are four ATPs here why four ATPs because in here if you look here carefully here one ATP is coming out here one ATP is coming out here but that is from only one phosphonyl pyruvate that is from your one bisphosphoglyceric acid but is there only one no sir there is two everything is a double now so two ATPs here two ATPs here so can I write four ATPs so four plus uh, four plus six is ten ATP ten ATP is the gross ten ATP is the gross now but in the payoff stage two ATP is consumed yes sir two ATP is consumed in your preparatory stage so 10 minus 2 that is your 8 ATP so the net profit the net profit is your 8 ATPs from your glycolysis clear is this clear is this clear is this clear do you want me to explain again ask me again I will explain to you this particular concept again because students this is a PYQ they have asked you numerous times they have asked you so many times this particular concept is this clear the net profit in your glycolysis the net profit of in your glycolysis is 8 ATPs 10 ATP is the gross 10 minus 2 because in preparatory phase 2 ATP was consumed that's why 10 minus 2 is 8 ATPs it is 8 ATPs someone is, a, someone is asking explain once again yes students I'll explain once again it will not take me more than 2 minutes in your preparatory stage in your preparatory stage minus 2 ATP yes sir in preparatory stage minus 2 ATP in your payoff stage in your payoff stage there was 2 NADH produced remember students after the pre after the in the payoff stage everything is double why double because we have isomerization whenever there is isomerization from this point onwards from this point onwards students remember from this point onwards from here everything is double double see here 2 2 2 2 and finally also 2 pyruvic acid why because this NA DHAP DHAP got converted DHAP got converted to your glycerol DHAP phosphate so from here onwards we had everything double double so this also is double 2 NADH here also we have 2 ATP here also we have 2 ATP everything is a double double from there so how many NADH do we have in total we have 2 NADH and we know 1 NADH provides your 3 ATP 3 into 2 is 6 ATPs and we also know in the cycles we have 2 ATP in the cycle we have 2 ATP right in 2 steps we have 2 ATP but we have everything double double now so that's why this is also into 2 so that is 4 ATP and we get 10 ATPs here minus 2 ATP what minus 2 because of this so what do we get we get 8 ATPs we get 8 ATPs clear is the point clear to everyone because students remember after your preparatory stage in your payoff stage after the isomerization everything becomes a double if there are two molecules from here onwards everything is two two molecules from here onwards everything is two two molecules that's why we have 
two NADH. If one molecule was there, only one NADH. Now from here onwards, we have two molecules of glycerol DR3 phosphate. See here, two molecules of phosphorylal pyruvate. Everything is two two. So that means there are doubling of everything. Now try to solve this question. Try to solve this question fast. Try to solve this question, everyone. Try to solve this question. Is the question visible? If the question is not visible, try to zoom in a little and answer this question. This is a NEET 2023 PYQ. NEET 2023 PYQ, everyone. Students, if you are following the session, if you are liking the session, I want everyone to like the video and share the session as much as possible. What is the question says? ATP is used in two steps of glycolysis. Yes, ATP is used in two steps of glycolysis. First step and third step. The first step is used to convert glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. At the sixth position, we added one phosphate. And the second ATP is used in converting fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. At the sixth position, we added one phosphate. At the first position, we add a phosphate. Yes, sir. So what is the answer? What is the answer first? What is the answer? Everyone should answer. Everyone should try to answer this question. Everyone should try to answer this question. In the first step, we added one phosphate. At the third step also, we added one phosphate. Remember, you are converting your fructose 6 at the 6th position. At the 6th position, we had one phosphate. Now, one more phosphate added to the first position. So, the answer is what? That is option number 2. No, GK, uh, this is wrong. GK, this is not. R is not false, second R is also correct, that is both A and R true, R is the correct explanation of A. Clear? Is everyone able to answer this question? Is everyone able to answer this question? Any doubt in this question, ask me right now, I will tell you because I have explained this properly now. I believe this is explained properly. Okay? Next question. Next question is the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. That is the first step. That is the first step. Glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. The first irreversible reaction of glycolysis is catalyzed by which enzyme? It is catalyzed by which enzyme? This right here is a neat PYQ student. These are not easy questions. This right here is a neat PYQ. It's a neat PYQ. Last year question. This is a last year question itself. Students, my session is purely based on the PYQs and the questions which you can expect. So if you watch my session, you can answer all the questions. What is the answer? The answer is hexokinase. And I also told you, the first step, the third step, and the tenth step, all the three steps are the irreversible reactions. They are the irreversible reactions. Clear? Now, next. That is the end of glycolysis. That is the end of glycolysis. Clear till now? Any doubt till now students? Any doubt in glycolysis? Students trust me if you go try to solve the questions now. Go try solving the questions of your glycolysis. You will be able to solve all the questions of glycolysis without any mistake now. Okay? Now, can we, ha can we check what happens to the glycolysis now? After glycolysis, after glycolysis, we get pyruvate. Now, this particular pyruvate has multiple fates. It can undergo so many different things. For example, listen, write down with me. Everyone, write down with me. Students, is the chat buffering? Is the stream buffering? Let me know, is the stream buffering? Ready? Is everyone ready for fate of pyruvate? Is everyone ready for the next step? Is there a small buffering? Let me check. Is there a buffering? No sir, right, okay cool. Students, write down with me now. Everyone should write down with me what is the fate of pyruvate? What exactly happens to the pyruvate? So all of us know this is glucose. So this 
So glucose is how many carbon? This glucose right here is a six carbon. Yes, sir. Glucose is a six carbon molecule. Now this glucose is converted to pyruvate. How many pyruvate? Two pyruvate. Now pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. Yes, pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. Where does this happen? This happens in your cytoplasm. This happens in your cytoplasm. Yes. And can I tell energy is also released here? Yes, sir. Energy is also released. Now this particular pyruvate can undergo. This particular pyruvate right here can undergo three different steps. Three different steps. Such as I'll write down here, write down with me, students. This is your class 10th diagram. This particular pyruvate right here can undergo three different processes. The first two, the first two are happening in the absence of oxygen. Yes, this is happening in the absence of oxygen. Absence of oxygen. This is happening in case of your yeast cells. This is happening in the case of your yeast cells. And this is called as your alcoholic fermentation. It's also called as your alcoholic fermentation. Called as what? Alcoholic fermentation. And in alcoholic fermentation, remember students, alcoholic fermentation is an incomplete oxidation. Alcoholic fermentation is an incomplete oxidation. Incomplete oxidation. Why is it called incomplete oxidation? Because in your alcoholic fermentation, we get ethanol plus CO2 is released. Along with CO2, can I also get energy? Yes, sir. Along with CO2, we all can also get energy. Why is it called incomplete? Because remember, this particular is 3 carbon. Now here we have ethanol is 2 carbon. Only 1 carbon is being released. That is why this is called as what? Incomplete combustion. Incomplete oxidation. The second one also happens in the absence of CO2. Also happens in absence of CO2. But this actually happens in the case of your muscle cells. In the case of your muscle cells. In the case of your muscle cells. Also in the case of certain lactic acid bacteria called as lactic acid fermentation. Called as what? Lactic acid fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation. And in lactic acid fermentation, we get lactic acid we get lactic acid plus energy. We get lactic acid plus energy. This is your three carbon compound. The last one, the last one which we are most interested in happens in the presence of oxygen. Presence of oxygen. This happens in the case of your mitochondria. Happens in the case of your mitochondria which results in the formation of your CO2 plus water plus energy. CO2 plus water plus energy. These three, these three are different fates of your pyruvate. Now we will be studying the first two. That, that is nothing but your absence of oxygen. That is two types of fermentation. Is everyone ready? Is everyone ready? Now, this right here is nothing but your oxidative carboxylation. Oxidative carboxylation that is happening in the case of aerobic respiration. That is also called as your link reaction. Ready? I hope students you are able to follow this one. I hope you are able to follow till now. That is in anaerobic respiration we have lactic acid fermentation as well as alcoholic fermentation now let's understand lactic acid fermentation the first point i told you lactic acid fermentation takes place in the muscle cells yes sir it happens in your muscle cells lactic acid or lactic acid bacteria now students remember this one point i want you to focus on one particular point here this pyruvate the pyruvate which we have here comes from your glycolysis. This pyruvate is 
थ्री कार्बन दिस पायरवेट इज रेड्यूस्ड दिस पायरवेट राइट योर इज रेड्यूस्ड टू योर लैक्टिक एसिड और लैक्टेट इट इज रेड्यूस्ड टू लैक्टिक एसिड और लैक्टेट एंड वॉट इज द रेड्यूसिंग एजेंट द रेड्यूसिंग एजेंट योर इज नथिंग बट योर एन ए डी एच एन ए डी एच इज योर रेड्यूसिंग एजेंट दिस इज रेड्यूसिंग योर पायर वेट इज रेड्यूस टू लैक्टेट और लैक्टिक एसिड लैक्टिक एसिड इज रेड्यूस लैक्टिक एसिड एंड ह्योर द रेड्यूसिंग एजेंट The reducing agent which you have here is none other than your NADH. If this is going reduction, when this is getting under reduction, it is reducing. This is undergoing oxidation. So this is getting re-oxidized. It is getting re-oxidized to your NAD plus. You can re-oxidize to NAD plus. Your NADH is converted to NAD plus. It is losing the protons. it is losing the protons it is getting reoxidized to nad plus and this nad plus right here this nad plus here right here is this joins your glycolysis in the glycolysis i told you in your glycolysis we were converting in the case of your glycolysis we were converting your nad plus to nadh if the nadh keeps on reducing If the NADH keeps on reducing, will there be a problem? Yes, sir, there will be a problem. That's why this NAD plus, this NAD plus goes back to your glycolysis. And what if what is released here? This H plus is released. Yes, H plus is released. Plus electrons are released. Yes, electrons are released. This particular electrons, this particular electrons and H plus is taken up by your pyruvate. It is taken up by your pyruvate, and the pyruvate gets reduced to lactic, lactate or lactic acid. What is reduction? Reduction is nothing but gaining the electrons. I told you, reduction is nothing but gaining the electrons or protons. So this NADH is getting re-oxidized. It's getting oxidized. This NADH is reduced, releasing your H plus and electrons. This electron is taken up by your pyruvate. pyruvate gets converted it is gets reduced to your lactate gets reduced to your lactate gets converted to your lactate the enzyme involved everyone listen very carefully this is a neat pyq here the enzyme involved here is nothing but your lactate dehydrogenase lactate dehydrogenase is the enzyme which reduces pyruvate to your lactate and the first electron acceptor the first question the first question i asked today was what the first electron acceptor in your lactic acid fermentation is your pyruvate pyruvate will accept the electrons from your nadh nadh gives the electrons electrons are taken up by pyruvate pyruvate gets reduced to lactate gets to lactate which also produce the energy plus the energy is this clear any doubt here ask me right now students i know you've been bahading this you might have bahaded this right you or might have bahaded that pyruvate gets converted to your uh, lactic acid plus energy lactic acid is produced in your uh, muscle cells that's why we get the uh, muscle pain when we do a lot of workout when you do a lot of sports but students when you in your class 11th right now they will not ask you such questions they will ask you questions like this pyruvate is getting reduced to lactate why because nadh is getting reoxidized to nad plus this is this is when it is getting oxidized it is losing electrons and protons those electrons are taken up by your pyruvate so the answer the answer to the question the first electron acceptor in the case of your lactic acid fermentation is pyruvate clear students i know this is not you must have learned before students just by heart this but if you open your ncert right now if you open your ncert right now read the line which is given there the line which is given there is 
pyruvate or pyruvic acid is converted to your lactic acid in the presence of lactate dehydrogenase and the reducing agent is reducing agent is your NAD plus electrons are being passed here clear now next one is alcoholic fermentation the next one is your alcoholic fermentation again alcoholic fermentation takes place in the case of your yeast yes it takes place in the case of your yeast what happens in the case of yeast your pyruvate which is a three carbon compound pyruvate which is the three carbon compound which is the result of your glycolysis undergoes your decarboxylation pyruvate will lose a co2 if three carbon is losing one carbon three minus two is what two three minus one is two so we get acetaldehyde that is a two carbon compound this is an intermediate step this right here is an intermediate step in the case of your alcoholic fermentation that is pyruvate is getting converted to acetaldehyde in the presence of the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase from the pyruvate a carbon dioxide is released outside remember students in the case of your alcoholic fermentation we have two enzymes which will be asked in examination in the case of your lactic acid fermentation there is only one enzyme that is your lactate dehydrogenase lactate dehydrogenase is the enzyme and here also if you know this acetaldehyde is getting reduced also this is getting reduced to your ethanol similarly this NADH is getting reoxidized to NAD plus and here we have two electrons as well as your H plus is released this will be taken up by your acetaldehyde and acetaldehyde is converted to your ethanol so the first electron acceptor the question is the first electron acceptor in the case of your alcoholic fermentation is none other than your acetaldehyde it is acetaldehyde which first time accepts the electrons which undergoes reduction it is getting reduced to your ethanol and the enzyme involved here is alcohol dehydrogenase the alcohol in which is involved is enzyme which is involved here is alcohol dehydrogenase students is this too difficult for you this is given in your ncrt i i know some of you would have just bited this some of you have bited this pyruvate is getting converted to your ethanol enzyme involved is pyruvate decarboxylase or alcohol dehydrogenase but you should not learn like this you should not learn by heart understand how your three carbon is getting converted to your two carbon ethanol is it point is clear are you following me why do i see a lot of silence in the chat are you following me is does anyone has any doubt here any doubt here in your alcoholic fermentation lactic acid fermentation should ask me right now should ask me right now if there is any doubt here remember in the case of your alcoholic fermentation there are two enzymes involved that is pyruvate decarboxylase pyruvate will lose our carbon dioxide decarboxylase gets converted to acetaldehyde acetaldehyde gets reduced to ethanol how is it getting reduced it is getting reduced by absorbing the electrons where is electrons coming from from your nadh nadh is giving the electrons and it is converted to nad plus now all clear amazing students students please understand botany don't buy hard all this okay if you look at your ncrt i am this is too yellow i should have changed the color but if you look at your ncrt diagram if your ncrt says what in your ncrt if you look here glucose is converted to glycylaldehyde 3 phosphate when the glycylaldehyde 3 phosphate is converted to your 3 phosphoglyceric acid nad is getting converted to nadh yes sir nad is getting converted to nadh it's two here two of this and we have phosphoenol pyruvate then we have the pyruvate or pyruvic acid now this pyruvic acid can undergo this pyruvic acid can undergo two reactions this pyruvate can undergo your lactic acid or alcoholic fermentation if it undergoes lactic acid fermentation again the nadh which is here this nadh is 
consumed. This is an important point. In the case of your lactic acid fermentation, in the case of your lactic acid as well as ethanolic, as well as ethanolic fermentation, the NADH which is produced here, the NADH which is produced in your glycolysis is completely consumed in the reaction. This NADH is completely consumed here. NADH is completely consumed and it is sent to, it is reoxidized to NAD plus. It is reoxidized to NAD plus. This NAD plus again joins the glycolysis. Again it joins the glycolysis. Sir, could you repeat the word role of NADH is? The role of NADH is very simple here, student. The role of NADH is nothing but NADH is getting reoxidized. Yes, NADH is getting reoxidized means it is losing the electrons. What is oxidation? Oxidation meaning is losing electrons. It is losing your 2H plus as well as 2 electrons. Now this electrons are taken up by your pyruvate here in the case of lactic acid. This electron is taken up your lactic acid. What is the meaning of reduction? The meaning of reduction is taking up the protons or taking up the electrons. If this electrons, the protons are taken up by pyruvate, the pyruvate gets reduced to your lactate. Read your NCRT. Read your NCRT. The it's getting consumed. It is getting reduced. Pyruvate is getting reduced to lactic acid. For the reduction to happen, the role of NADH is nothing but your reducing agent. The role of NADH is reducing agent. Now, what is the role of NAD? One more thing. If this particular NADH keeps on getting consumed, right? If this keeps on getting consumed, the replenishment, the regeneration of NAD happens here. So NADH gets converted back to your NAD plus and this NAD plus is sent back here for the regeneration, for sent back for regeneration. So students, in the case of anaerobic respiration, in the case of your anaerobic respiration, how many ATP are produced? Can anyone in the chat tell me what is the net gain of what is the net gain of ATP in the case of your all uh, anaerobic respiration? In the case of your anaerobic respiration, can I tell in your payoff stage? Here also glycolysis is taking place. In your payoff stage, sorry, in your preparatory stage, in case of your anaerobic respiration in case of your anaerobic respiration in payoff stage minus 2 ATP in your preparatory stage minus 2 ATP in your payoff stage this NADH is getting consumed if we have 2 NADH here 2 NADH is getting consumed here so NADH is getting completely consumed. So can I tell the NADH, the 2 NADH is completely consumed. So we are not getting any ATP here. We are not getting any ATP from your NADH. Now what about the 4 ATPs? We had 4 ATPs there, right? 4 ATPs was there. Initially, in case of your normal glycolysis also, there was 4 ATPs. When glycolysis was taking place, 4 ATPs was produced. Now from this 4 ATP, 2 ATP is consumed. So 4 minus 2 is what? 2 ATP. So during students, during your anaerobic respiration, only in anaerobic, not in aerobic, in case of your anaerobic respiration, only and only 2 ATP are produced. If a organism is undergoing anaerobic respiration, very little energy, very small energy is released in your anaerobic respiration. That is only 2 ATP is released. Clear? Any doubt here? Yes, sir. I'm going to complete the entire chapter today. Complete the entire chapter today. Is this point clear to all of you? Then interested? Then understood. Any doubt here? Remember, in the case of your anaerobic respiration, the NADH is getting consumed completely. 
in your lactic acid as well as your ethanolic ethanolic as well as lactic acid the nad is getting consumed why because it is act as acting as a reducing agent it is getting consumed completely and we only have we have we have only two atp left dinesh we want clarity students trust me any doubt you can ask me right now if you do not have any doubt watch the session again tomorrow in 2x speed if you have any doubt you can always ask me okay now if you look at your ncrt if you look at your ncrt slip here the enzymes in your pyruvic acid decarboxylase and alcoholic dehydrogenase are involved in the case of your in the case of your alcoholic fermentation as well as in in anaerobic as was it run pyruvic acid there is second one written and in muscle cells it is pyruvic during acceleration inverted respiration ah in the case of your lactic acid it is in case of your lactic acid present in muscle cells it's enzyme is lactate dehydrogenase but in the case of your fermentation it is pyruvate dehydrogenase as well as alcoholic alcohol dehydrogenase the two enzymes which can be asked as a PYQ okay now here one more question which i want all of you to focus here is here in both lactic acid and alcoholic fermentation not much energy is released only 2 atp is released yes sir less than 7% energy is uh, 1% energy in glucose is released and not all of it is trapped as high energy bonds of atp so how much of energy is coming out of your fermentation as well as lactic acid as well as alcoholic fermentation less than 7% see in case of your alcoholic as well as lactic acid fermentation less than 7% of energy is in glucose is released so from glucose only 7% energy is released both in the case of your lactic acid as well as your alcoholic fermentation clear now the next point i want all of you to understand here is i told you alcohol is prepared alcohol is prepared by your yeast right yeast prepares alcohol but what is the maximum percentage the maximum percentage of alcohol which can be prepared by traditional method is 13% your ncrt see it. the maximum percentage which can be prepared is 13% in the case of your wine in the case of wine as well as traditional beer maximum alcohol percentage in that alcohol is less than 13% why sir why it can't go more than 13% in beer and as well as wine because if it goes more than 13% of alcohol in the cytoplasm of your yeast the yeast will undergo alcohol poisoning yeast will undergo something called as your alcohol poisoning that is also called as your alcohol poisoning there was something written here there it undergoes yeast poisoning and the yeast will completely die and the yeast your your uh, fungus will completely die so the traditional method the maximum percentage of alcohol which can be is 13% but if you know the higher percentage if you want higher percentage of alcohol that is 30% 20% 40% we have to undergo a other process called as distillation which you'll be studying in your microbes chapter which you'll be studying in your microbes chapter okay now let's see a question let's see a question what are the products of your ethyl alcohol fermentation that is alcoholic fermentation what are the products of alcoholic fermentation i'll give you 10 seconds to answer the question yes yeast is called as your brewer's yeast for your alcohol fermentation now what is the answer for this one in your alcoholic fermentation what is released we know in alcoholic fermentation your ethanol is released yes ethanol is released co2 is released and as well as the energy is released now that was your anaerobic respiration done and dusted so can we start with aerobic respiration first in the chat everyone in the chat who tell me can we start with the aerobic respiration now can we start with the aerobic respiration 
is everyone following first of all i want to know have you understood alcoholic fermentation what are the enzymes involved in alcoholic fermentation what are the enzymes involved in the case of your lactic acid fermentation where does it happen clear done and dusted the next concept which i want to teach you is aerobic respiration students remember in your aerobic respiration in the case of your aerobic respiration the complete in the case of aerobic respiration it is a complete oxidation yes sir aerobic respiration is complete oxidation why is it complete oxidation because your glucose that is six carbon here gets converted to six co2 meaning is what the complete oxidation of glucose is happening the entire glucose is getting consumed entire glucose is released energy is released and your co2 and water are your by products now students where does it happen where does the aerobic respiration next step happens for example all of us know the in case of your glycolysis which took place in the cytoplasm we had the glucose glucose was converted to pyruvate now this particular pyruvate this particular pyruvate will enter into the mitochondria this particular enzyme right sorry this particular component that is your pyruvate will enter inside your mitochondria so it enters the mitochondria from cytoplasm it enters the mitochondria so what exactly happens in mitochondria students inside your mitochondria inside your mitochondria there are three main steps inside the mitochondria there are three main steps such as your oxidative decarboxylation first step first step is oxidative decarboxylation the second step is your krebs cycle the third step is happening here is oxidative phosphorylation which is nothing but your electron transport chain third step is your electron transport chain so can we start can we start with your oxidative decarboxylation now can we start yes i have to drink some water i guess students let's take a two minutes water break can we take a two minutes water break from past two hours we have been watching this right from past two hours we have been at it so can we take a two minutes water break now after the two minutes water break right after the two minutes water break we will start with decarboxylation then we'll be doing krebs cycle then we'll be doing the electron transport chain after the electron transport chain i will be teaching you amphiboic pathway and after that respiratory quotient and the chapter is over and the chapter is over after that okay Two minutes. Drink uh, water break. Two minutes. I'll be back. Okay. Someone is asking me, sir, you forgot substrate level phosphorylation. Whatever happened in glycolysis, right? You take a substrate in glycolysis that is your glucose. and you add phosphorylation to it that is nothing but your substrate level phosphorylation yes that is your substrate level phosphorylation is nothing but your glycolysis clear clear your substrate level phosphorylation is nothing but your glycolysis in your glycolysis 
we are taking a substrate that is your glucose and to that glucose we are adding phosphate and when we add the phosphate and in the end we are getting energy out of it that is your substrate level phosphorylation i think i forgot to mention that <laughs> Clear? What you know? What is phosphate level phosphorylation now? Do you know what is substrate level phosphorylation? Substrate that is your glucose, and phosphorylation is adding of phosphate, and we get substrate level ATP is generated. So can we start? Everyone in the chat, can we start with the next concept that is your oxidative decarboxylation, also called as your link reaction? First, let me know in the chat if I can start the next concept that is your. Oxidative decarboxylation. I want energy in the chat. I want everyone to be energetic now. I want everyone to be more attention, more focused. Okay? Can we start? Yes, GK is saying yes. So, students, first thing you need to know in oxidative decarboxylation, oxidative decarboxylation takes place in your mitochondrial matrix. Yes, sir. Oxidative decarboxylation takes place in your mitochondrial matrix but sir what is that happening if you notice the structures if you notice the structures here <clears throat> this is your pyruvate this is your pyruvate the first step the first step in your oxidative decarboxylation is nothing but your decarboxylation the first step is nothing but decarboxylation that is releasing of CO2. Yes, there is release of CO2 here. It is from your pyruvate structure, this part here, this part here loses the CO2. Yes, we have released the CO2. CO2 is gone. So what are we left with? Now we are left with a two carbon compound. Now this carbon compound, can I write it as? COCH3 this is COCH3 this is nothing but your acetyl group yes chemistry acetyl group now this particular acetyl group undergoes oxidation it undergoes what it undergoes oxidation undergoes oxidation so all of you know students all of you know every single time every single time a compound undergoes oxidation what happens there is oxidation means loss of electrons yes oxidation means what loss of electrons as well as loss of protons yes there is loss of electrons and loss of protons and this electron and this proton are taken up by your NAD plus your acetyl group undergoes oxidation it releases your two electrons and two protons these two electrons and two protons are taken up by your NAD plus and NAD plus undergoes reduction why because what is reduction reduction is gaining of electrons reduction is called as what gaining of electrons or gaining of protons so this particular NAD plus takes up the two electrons and gets converted to your NADH plus H plus NADH plus H plus and what do we have in the third step that is the second step first step is what decarboxylation yes second step is what oxidate second step is oxidation your acetyl group is undergoing oxidation to produce your two electrons plus two protons electrons and protons are taken up by your NAD plus and this undergoes reduction here they are undergoing reduction second step and in the third step there is something called as coenzyme A now this coenzyme A attaches to your acetyl group this coenzyme A attaches to your acetyl group to form the acetyl CoA to form so this is your acetyl group acetyl group this is the coenzyme part this is the coenzyme A this is the coenzyme A that is the third step that is attaching the acetyl group from here plus the coenzyme we get acetyl CoA this is called as what oxidative decarboxylation why oxidative decarboxylation because the compound here the pyruvate that is first it is losing the two 
it is losing the CO2 that is decarboxylation then then this acetyl this acetyl is undergoing oxidation that is why oxidative and when this is undergoing oxidation the two electrons and protons are taken up by your NAD plus NAD plus undergoes reduction to produce your NADH that is energy is released energy is released and then we have coenzyme A this coenzyme A is reacting with your acetyl group which forms the acetyl coenzyme A clear does anyone has a doubt here does anyone has a doubt in the case of your oxidative decarboxylation there are two more points I have to tell you that is the enzyme involved and there is a another cofactor that is your a metal ion and your metal ion that will tell you later any doubt here see here the carbonyl group is from pyruvate is removed that is called as decarboxylation the two carbon compound that is your acetyl loses the electrons that is it's undergoing oxidation undergoing oxidation those two electrons are taken up by NADH this gets reduced to your NAD plus then we have the two carbon acetyl group two carbon acetyl group forms reacts with your coenzyme A to forms your acetyl coenzyme A this is called as your this is nothing but your oxidative decarboxylation this is a link reaction this is a link reaction between your glycolysis and Krebs cycle glycolysis and Krebs cycle and the resultant the resultant of your oxidative decarboxylation is a compound called as your acetyl coenzyme A acetyl coenzyme A is a two carbon molecule please remember this acetyl coenzyme A is a two carbon molecule here two co compound molecule now if you look at your NCRT if you look at your NCRT right now they have given you pyruvic acid plus coenzyme A plus NAD plus this pyruvic acid undergoes decarboxylation that is CO2 is being released out it is uh, then the two carbon compound is going undergoing reduction then we get acetyl coenzyme A and we also get NADH how do we get NADH because whenever it is going oxidation the electrons are taken up by your NADH NAD plus we get NADH the one more thing I want I will to remember is the cofactors here such as your Mg2 plus is involved other than that the enzyme which makes sure this reaction happens is nothing but your pyruvate dehydrogenase pyruvate dehydrogenase mg2 plus are the two other components of the oxidative decarboxylation also called as your link reaction also called as your link reaction also called as your gateway reaction also called as your what gateway reaction does anyone has any doubt in your oxidative decarboxylation how does it actually happen if you see this you will not be able to understand whatever if you need if you see this you will understand you need to see this to understand decarboxylation oxidation is happening reduction is happening here coenzyme is attaching and we get acetyl coenzyme A and this acetyl coenzyme A this acetyl coenzyme A enters your Krebs cycle this acetyl coenzyme A enters your Krebs cycle and that's the start of your Krebs cycle which was discovered by your scientist called as Hans Krebs Hans Krebs discovered your Krebs cycle so students can we start the Krebs cycle now can we start with the Krebs cycle I hope the concept of oxidative carboxylation is clear to you you don't need to buy heart it understand it okay can we start students once I will completely draw it I will completely draw the Krebs cycle once I want you to write with me NCRT is giving an incomplete diagram I am making a complete diagram now okay let's start with full Josh can we start the Krebs cycle everyone students I told you in a link reaction we have the acetyl coenzyme in a link reaction we have the acetyl coenzyme A yes we have the acetyl coenzyme A here from this acetyl coenzyme A is entering the Krebs cycle now this particular acetyl coenzyme A will react with this particular coenzyme A will react with 
oxalo acetate this particular coenzyme a will react with oxalo acetate when acetyl coenzyme a which is a two carbon compound which i already told you this oxalo acetate is a four carbon molecule when they react they form the first product of your citric acid cycle or your krebs cycle called as your citrate they form the citrate which is nothing but your 4 plus 2 that is your 6 carbon molecule yes 6 carbon molecule now this citrate undergoes isomerization which forms isocitrate which forms isocitrate now this isocitrate undergoes oxidative decarboxylation i'll be teaching you that don't worry i'll be showing you each step by step this isocitrate undergoes oxidative decarboxylation to form your alpha keto glutarate alpha keto glutarate and during this process since this is oxidative decarboxylation co2 is released nadh is also released now this alpha keto glutarate also undergoes it also also undergoes oxidative carboxylation now you know what is oxidative carboxylation right remember every single time in your krebs cycle also there are two places where oxidative carboxylation is happening inside your krebs cycle the first time it is happening between isocitrate to alpha keto glutarate the second time it is happening between your alpha keto glutarate to succinyl coenzyme a and students remember whenever there is oxidative decarboxylation there is release of energy NADH and also there is release of CO2 now this was your 6 carbon 6 carbon if one carbon is gone how many carbon do we have here we have 5 carbon here 5 carbon 1 carbon is gone this becomes 4 carbon here this becomes 4 carbon clear this becomes 4 carbon now this succinyl coenzyme A gets converted to your succinyl succinate so no gets converted to your succinate gets converted to succinate and when this conversion is happening a GTP is released a GTP is released go on and triphosphate and this succinate undergoes this succinate also undergoes and forms your fumarate and when this is happening one FADH2 one FADH2 is released FADH2 is released and this fumarate loses the water this one so takes up the water take the forms malate forms the malate and this malate gets converted to your oxaloacetate when this conversion is happening when this conversion is happening one more NADH plus NADH H plus is released NADH H plus is released this is your entire of your Krebs cycle this is your entire of your Krebs cycle I have a small trick to remember this the small trick which I have always been using is make sure I write it I'll write it here in the top the small trick which I have been using here is officer can I keep selling sandwiches for money the O in the officer stands for oxaloacetate the C stands for citrate I stands for isocitrate the K stands for alpha ketoglutarate the S stands for your succinyl coenzyme A the S in the sandwich stands for succinate the F stands for fumarate the M stands for malate the M stands for malate then again we have again oxaloacetate that is O Students, this is a small trick which I've been I have. If you have still remember, if you have difficulty remembering all these terms, practice it. Students, the more times you write the cycle, right? The more times you write the cycle, it becomes easier for you. It becomes 
easier for you. This is a very simple trick which I've been using from class uh, 11th. Yeah, class 11th only. From class 11th, this is a small trick I've been using. Officer, can I keep selling sandwiches for money? O is oxyacetate, C is citrate, I is acetate, K is alpha ketoglutarate, S is succinyl coenzyme A, S is your succinate. F is your fumarate, M is your malate. This is a small trick. You can use a small. Sorry, <laughs> you can also use a small trick for your benefit. But now I'll tell you each step by step how the question will be asked. So is everyone ready for the stepwise decoding? See, I can stop here, right? I can stop here and I can tell you Krebs cycle is over. But I will not do that. I will teach you step by step. I'll teach you step by step what happens now. Ready? We'll decode the Krebs cycle now. Remember, ne remember how I decode the glycolysis? Each step by step. Now step by step I'll teach you glycolysis. What happens inside structurally also. Okay, because that's how the question will be asked. Ready? Is everyone ready now? Amazing, is everyone ready? Now, this is your cycle. This is your Krebs cycle. This is what I'll be using. This is what I have written also. Now students, the first step. The first step happens in your mitochondrial matrix. What is happening in your first step? In your first step, acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA from a link reaction is joining with your oxalo oxaloacetate, which is forming your citrate. This is your first stable product. First stable product and that is why that is why your entire cycle is also called as citric acid cycle citric acid cycle and students remember this is two carbon plus four carbon and we get six carbon citrate and the enzyme involved here the enzyme students this is very important very important enzyme citrate synthase please write down this please write down this that is your, please write down this, that is citrate synthase. Now students remember, in acetyl-CoA, this CoA, this CoA part is released. And this CoA again is involved in your oxidative decarboxylation. Again, this particular CoA joins the oxidative decarboxylation. First step, any doubt, ask me right now. If you have any doubt in the first step, ask me right now. No step. We'll go to the second step now. Now, citrate is done. Now, from citrate, we get isocitrate. Now, citrate to isocitrate. Citrate to isocitrate is nothing but isomerization. Now, what is isomerization? Same chemical, same chemical structure, but the structure lead is different. Your citrate is getting converted to isocitrate. Yes, citrate is getting converted to isocitrate in the presence of enzyme aconitase. In the presence of enzyme called as aconitase. That is done. Now, isocitrate is converted to alpha ketoglutarate. I told you, right? Citrate is getting converted to alpha ketoglutarate. Now, in this conversion, students, this is a need PYQ. Everyone should focus now. This is a need PYQ. First, oxidative decarboxylation in your Krebs cycle is happening between isocitrate to alpha keto glutarate. What is happening here? Listen very carefully. Your isocitrate, listen very carefully, isocitrate is undergoing oxidation. I repeat again, this isocitrate is undergoing oxidation. Is undergoing oxidation similarly how their your pyruvate undergoing underwent oxidation similarly your isocitrate is undergoing oxidation when it undergoes oxidation what happens electrons are released yes sir electrons are released that electrons the free electrons are taken up by your NAD plus NAD plus gets converted to your NADH and this is also called as oxidative decarboxylation so there is also a release of co2 yes sir there is also a release of co2 students the first step the first part in your krebs cycle 
where oxidative decarboxylation is happening is between your isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate. That's why can you see here? Six carbon to five carbon. Why? CO2 is released and this is undergoing oxidation. Whenever it's going oxidation, the electrons are released. The electrons are taken up by NAD plus. It is converted to NADH. So first oxidative decarboxylation is happening between isocitrate and alpha keto glutarate. Done. The second oxidative decarboxylation. The second oxidative decarboxylation which is happening in your Krebs cycle is between your alpha keto glutarate and succinyl coenzyme A. Between succinyl coenzyme A. Again, alpha keto glutarate undergoes oxidation. It undergoes oxidation. Electrons are released. Yes, electrons are released. Those electrons are taken up by your NAD plus taken up by your NAD plus and also there is release of CO2 that is why 5 carbon to 4 carbon so the second the second oxidative decarboxylation is happening between your alpha ketoglutarate and succinyl coenzyme A so students remember there was a neat question how many oxidative decarboxylation is happening in the case of your Krebs cycle the answer should be the answer should be two times two times oxidative decarboxylation is happening clear see here and in this case in this case when the second oxidative decarboxylation happening CO2 is released formation of NADH is happening in the same time a coenzyme A a coenzyme A attaches to your succinate and that's why we get that's why we get succinyl coenzyme A that is why we get succinyl coenzyme A so alpha ketoglutarate glutarate to succinyl coenzyme A because a coenzyme A is also attaching there clear now this succinyl coenzyme A right this succinyl coenzyme A is very <clears throat> This succinyl coenzyme A is very unstable. This succinyl coenzyme A is very unstable. So what happens? This from this succinyl coenzyme A, this coenzyme A is released outside. When the coenzyme A is released outside, there is a vacant spot here. To that vacant spot, the phosphate will come and attach to that vacant spot. What is that? Phosphorylation. That is phosphorylation. Yes. And which makes a, we get an intermediate step called as when succinyl coenzyme A, when the phosphate attaches here, we get an intermediate step called as succinyl phosphate. Now, from this succinyl phosphate, with the help of succinyl synthase, succinyl synthase gets converted to succinate. Students, remember from succinyl coenzyme A to succinate, there is an intermediate step called as succinyl phosphate. Why is it important? Because when we are converting from succinyl phosphate to succinate, the phosphate, the free phosphate is released outside. That free phosphate is taken up by your GDP, guanine diphosphate. Guanine diphosphate takes up the phosphate from here and gets converted to guanine triphosphate. Can gets converted to your guanine triphosphate. That's why. Can you see here? From converting your succinyl CoA to succinate, one GTP is released. One GTP is released. Clear? Now you know how exactly we get NADH. Now you know exactly how we get NADH here. Now we know why CO2 is released here. Now we know what CO2 is released here. Now you also know why a GTP is formed. That's called as decoding the Krebs cycle. That's called as decoding the Krebs cycle. No by hearting. Clear? Now, now we have succinate gets converted to your fumarate. Is there any carbon number change? No. So is there any decarboxylation? No. But in your matrix, but in your matrix, we have certain protons. Those protons are taken up by your succinate and it converts FAD to FADH2. It converts FAD to FADH2 and the enzyme involved students here is called as succinate dehydrogenase. This is a
inner membrane protein it is a inner membrane protein not protein protein inner membrane protein because the same succinate dehydrogenase is also involved in your electron transport chain it is also part of your electron transport chain clear part of your electron transport chain so fadh done now fumarate to malate one water is adding fumarate gets converted to malate by addition of a water look at the structure here two hydrogen yeah water is being added here water is being added here h2o is having added here here sorry here h2o is being added water is being added now then we have what malate to oxaliciate one nadh is being released malate to malate to oxaliciate one nadh is being also produced but is it oxidative decarboxylation no it is not oxidative decarboxylation in fact from your outside from your matrix region of phosphate uh, proton is taken up and nad plus is getting converted to nad h is getting reduced to nad h that is the entire of glycolysis in your ncert students in your ncert if you look at the krebs cycle formula if you look at the ncert the krebs cycle formula it says pyruvic acid pyruvic acid plus 4 nad plus plus 1 fad plus h2o plus adp plus inorganic phosphate in your mitochondrial matrix it's getting converted to your 3 co2 4 nad plus 4h plus fadh2 and 1 atp do you see some kind of change here because i told you i told you here only 2 co2 but here sir they have mentioned 3 co2 i told you there is only 1 2 3 nadh can we see here 4 nadh and 4 nad plus something is missing A adp here because this gdp later gets converted to it is similar to your atp similar to your adp that is sorted that is your sorted but what about this fad yes there is only one fad only one fad is done but why is there 4 nad plus here can anyone in the chat tell me why have they written ncert has mentioned 4 nad plus here and 4 nadh anyone in the chat who can tell me this is where ncert plays with your life this is where ncert plays with you the answer is very simple students because they have included the link reaction also because we know in your link reaction is also a oxidative decarboxylation in your link reaction one nadh is produced in your link reaction co2 is also released yes oxidative decarboxylation nadh is produced co2 is also released that is why here three is from three nadh is from your krebs cycle one is from your link reaction four here again is from three is from your krebs cycle one is from your link reaction here three co2 in your three co2 one co2 is from link reaction two co2 is from your krebs cycle three co2 is from your krebs cycle try to solve this question try to solve this question fast so the question how many molecules of carbon dioxide are released in krebs cycle per glucose molecule per glucose molecule how many carbon is being produced how many co2 is produced fast 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 let's see how many of you answer this question fast now first of all it cannot be 3 why it cannot be 3 because they are asking you only krebs cycle here they are asking you only krebs cycle that's why it cannot be 3 here right it cannot be 3 it is asking you krebs cycle right they asking you krebs cycle oops they asking krebs cycle it cannot be 3 if they ask you link reaction plus krebs cycle then it will be 3 this is gone now some of you are saying 2 some of you are saying 2 here 
टू इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग वाई इज अ टू इज रॉन्ग रिमेंबर स्टूडेंट्स वी आर टेलिंग पर ग्लूकोस मॉलिक्यूल वन ग्लूकोस विल रिलीज हाउ मेनी पायरोवेट वन ग्लूकोस विल रिलीज टू पायरोवेट ना दिस रिएक्शन हियर इज फॉर वन पायरोवेट ओनली सो इन वन पायरोवेट टू सीओ टू सो टू पायरोवेट फोर सीओ टू टू पायरोवेट फोर सीओ टू क्लियर हाउ वॉज द क्वेश्चन How was the question, everyone? How was the question? This is how you can expect in your NEET examination, students. This is an easy chapter, but the question, right? The question they will they make is going to be like this. So be prepared for questions like this. When they read the question, per glucose molecule only in Krebs cycle. That's why this is wrong. This is wrong. This is correct. This is how you can expect the, for the questions in your examination. Enjoying. Tricky question, amazing. Now, next question. This is your NEET PYQ, NEET 2022, I guess. NEET 2022 or 23 PYQ. Ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. The answer is twice. They are asking you how many times decarboxylation occurs in each TCS cycle. They are asking you each TCS cycle oxidative decarboxylation. Decarboxylation is happening only twice. It is happening twice. Read the question very carefully, students. Now, the five-carbon compound in the TCS cycle is. This is also is a need PYQ. I am including a lot of questions today. I am including so many questions for every one of you to make sure that you get a you no know, sense of how the questions will come from this chapter. The five carbon compound is your alpha keto glutarate. From alpha keto glutarate onwards, it's always four carbon. But before that, it is six carbon. Citrate is six carbon. Okay. Now the number of Substrate level phosphorylation in one turn of citric acid cycle. In one turn of citric acid cycle, how many substrate level phosphorylation is happening? First, who can ask the question? In number of substrate level phosphorylation in so number of substrate level phosphorylation in one turn of your citric acid cycle. First, ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. The answer is one, obviously, because only once your GTP is GTP is getting converted to GTP in your Krebs cycle. Clear? Only one. Only once GTP is getting converted to GTP. See, students, whenever phosphorylation means what? Addition of phosphate. Phosphorylation means addition of phosphate. Substrate means Using a substrate, this Krebs cycle is using the substrate for your glucose. Glucose is getting pyruvate. Pyruvate is only getting converted here, right? So it is a substrate level phosphorylation. Now, what is the role of NADH? What is the role of NADH plus and FADH that in the synthesized? Whatever NADH is produced now, totally we have four NADH now. One from link reaction, three from your Krebs cycle. We have one FADH two. What happens to all of them? What is the fate of all the NADH? Even in your glycolysis, even in your glycolysis, two NADH is produced. What happens to all the NADH? All the NADH goes and joins your <laughs> goes and joins your electron transport chain. That is nothing but your oxidative phosphorylation. oxidative phosphorylation using the oxygen you have oxidative phosphorylation that is nadh and fadh enter the electron transport chain adp is formed as a result of transfer of electrons from nadh and fadh and the final electron acceptor the final electron acceptor in your 
electron transport system or electron transport chain is your oxygen by series of electron carriers so we have certain electron carriers we have jumping electrons the electrons jump and go to the oxygen that is called as your electron transport chain all the nadh all the fadh enter into the inner mitochondrial membrane so where does it happen it happens in your inner mitochondrial membrane this is a neat pyq this again is a neat pyq that is in the inner mitochondrial membrane that is transfer of electrons is happening but where is krebs cycle happening krebs cycle is happening in the matrix while your electron transport chain is happening in the case of your inner mitochondrial membrane in the inner mem mitochondrial membrane clear is that clear question will be later on now students before i go before we take a small break i want everyone to write down i want everyone to write down there are four protein complexes everyone should write down this from now we are starting electron transport chain now before we take a 5 minutes break or 10 minutes break i want everyone to write down there are in total five in total there are five protein complexes what is the meaning of complex complex means proteins plus certain metal ions certain metal ions proteins plus certain metal ions in total there are five complexes that is we have your first complex is your nadh dehydrogenase please write down this please write down this the first complex is your nadh dehydrogenase the second complex is your succinate dehydrogenase succinate dehydrogenase the third one is your cytochrome b1 complex the third one is your cytochrome b1 complex the fourth one is your cytochrome oxidase and the fifth one is your atp synthase in total there are five protein complexes this is also called as your fadh2 dehydrogenase it is also called as your fadh2 dehydrogenase students before i we take a break i want everyone to write down the different protein complexes and two mobile carriers two different mobile carriers the first one is called as your ubiquinon which is represented as uq now this uq can undergo reduction this uq can undergo reduction it can take up the protons and it can turn uq h2 this is your ubiquinol this is nothing but your ubiquinol and the other mobile carrier is called as your cytochrome c the other mobile carrier is called as your cytochrome c students please write down this let me bro let me block the spammer students write down this we have four different five different complexes nadh dehydrogenase succinate dehydrogenase that is complex number 2 complex number 3 that is oxytochrome bc1 complex complex number 4 cytochrome oxidase complex number 5 adp synthase two mobile carriers that is your ubiquinone as well as ubiquinol sorry sorry ubiquin ubiquinone and cytochrome c done now i want everyone to draw this simple diagram I want every one of you to draw the simple diagram and we'll take a 10 minutes break. And we'll take a 10 minutes break by the by the time I come back. By the time I come back, I want everyone to draw this particular diagram in your book and then after the break, we will start with electron transport chain. After the break, we will start with electron transport chain now what is the time now the time is right now your 9:50 will exactly start it so 8:15 exactly started 9 o'clock exactly at 9 o'clock we will start 
we will start electron transport chain exactly at nine o'clock we'll start electron transport chain so 10 minutes i have given you drink some water eat something and then we will come then we will start with your electron transport chain which is given here students trust me so many students still don't understand electron transport chain there are so many questions from here but today i will clear i will clear all the doubts related to your electron transport chain this will take at least 20 to 25 minutes to explain okay so we'll take 10 minutes break now okay after 10 minutes we will start with your electron transport chain clear by the time i come back by the time i come back i want every one of you to at least write this diagram okay write this diagram see you in 10 minutes see you in 10 minutes
सो हे स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू विदान टू नीट इंग्लिश दिस बसवराज सो स्टूडेंट्स आई होप टिल नाउ एवरी सिंगल कॉन्सेप्ट हैज बीन क्लियर टू यू वी स्टार्टेड ऑफ विथ वॉट इज एस्पिरेशन द बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ एस्पिरेशन देन वी डेड योर ग्लाइकोलिस इन डिटेल्ड ग्लाइकोलिस डन एंड डस्टेड देन वी जम्प टू योर ऑक्सीडेटिव फॉस्फरेशन देन वी सॉरी ऑक्सीडेटिव डी कॉपऑक्सीशन after that we did your krebs cycle now once krebs cycle is also over now we are finally finally at your electron transport chain the same electron transport chain which is students find so difficult students find this electron transport chain so so difficult students the reason that is because if you read the ncrt if you read the ncrt for particular topic like this you will not understand in fact the ncrt diagram and the ncrt information they do not match at all they do not match so listen students today i'll be teaching you electron transport chain and i want every one of you out there to write with me yes i want each and every one of you to write down with me every step by step every step by step i want you to write down with me and we will go understand the complete functioning of electron transport chain can we start can we start student students my dear students can we start electron transport chain i want thumbs up in the chat fire in the chat lighting hearts anything in the chat and we will start your electron transport chain now okay let's have electron transport chain now all of you know all of you know in the case of your matrix in your matrix what is happening in matrix in your mitochondrial matrix krebs cycle is taking place Yes, Krebs cycle is taking place in your mitochondrial matrix. The Krebs cycle produces NADH and FADH. Yes, it produces NADH and FADH. Now, I will start start the reaction. I will start electron transport chain by filling up these blocks. Yes, we will start filling these blocks. The first one here, the first one here is nothing but your complex one. The first one here is nothing but your complex one. Complex one. One second, students. So I hope you have also completely drew this because I want all of you to draw, draw with me. Okay. This is your complex one. Then we have complex three. Then we have complex two. Then we have complex four. then finally we have in the end that we have the complex 5 yes the first complex is your nadh dehydrogenase then we have complex 3 that is cytochrome 3 bc1 complex then we have fadh2 or cyto succinate dehydrogenase then we have your complex number 4 that is cytochrome c oxidase then we have finally this complex number 5 that is your atp synthase which has two parts the atp synthase mainly has two parts that is your rotating part here f0 and we have the f1 part f0 and f1 part now i will start filling up each and each one of them complexes what are the different components now i told you a protein complex will have certain metal ions yes certain metal ions such as your iron So I'll start by filling it up. I want each and every one of you to also fill it up along with me. Now, your complex one. Your complex one mainly has two components, such as your F M N, that is flavin mono nucleotide, and also it has your iron sulfur complexes, F P S complexes. Then, in the case of your complex number three, it has your cytochrome B. Yes, it has your cytochrome B. Also, it has FES complex. Now, your it's called cytochrome B C one complex, right? So, it should also have C cytochrome C one done. Now, what about your complex number two? Your complex number two only has two components, such as your F A D as well as F E S F A D and as well as F E S. While your cytochrome four. your cytochrome 4 actually has two copper units two copper centers such as your copper center a and copper center b copper center a and 
copper center B. Now between the two copper centers, it also has between the two copper centers, it also has certain cytochromes such as cytochrome A3 and cytochrome B. Cytochrome A3 and cytochrome B. A3 A1 sorry. Cytochrome 3 and cytochrome A1. And, and this is your normal F0 and F1. I hope all of you wrote till now. All of you have filled up your uh, complexes. Now if you look, this is the matrix region. And I have told you, the entire jumping of electrons, the entire electron transport chain takes place in your inner mitochondrial membrane. Yes sir, it happens in inner mitochondrial membrane. What is this? This is your intermembrane space. The below part is your intermembrane space. Are you with me all of you? Just say yes sir in the chat and I'll go ahead and I'll start teaching you how does it actually happen. How does it actually happen? Now, in the case of your Krebs cycle, in the case of your Krebs cycle, the NADH, NADH lands on your first complex that is called as NADH dehydrogenase. So your NADH2, let me change the color, let me change the color here. In your first complex, your NADH2, NADH2 loses the protons. What is it losing? Means it is undergoing oxidation. Yes, it is undergoing oxidation. NADH2 gets converted to your NAD plus. NAD plus. When it is getting converted, when it is losing electrons, it is losing protons. That is oxidation. Now what happens to the electrons? The electrons will enter inside. The electrons will enter inside. Electrons are entering. Remember, the entire process of your electron transport chain, there is jumping of electrons. Every single place, electrons are jumping. Yes. So here, the electrons are entering. Electrons are entering into this space here. Yes, they are entering into this space. But what happens to the proton, sir? What happens to the proton? Listen to me very carefully now. The proton from here, the proton here from your NADH2 directly goes to your intermembrane space. So your proton from here directly enters your intermembrane space. That is 2H plus will enter into your intermembrane space. Clear? Now, everyone focus now. Everyone focus very much, very carefully focus here. It is going to intermembrane space. Now, what happens to these two electrons? Now, these two electrons, students, listen to me very carefully. These two electrons enter your mobile carrier. Nothing but your ubiquinol. This particular electron is entering your ubiquinol. So, right here, two electrons. Yes, two electrons are entering your ubiquinol. Now this particular ubiquinone, this particular ubiquinone is taking up the electrons. Right, it is taking up the electrons. So it is undergoing reduction. Taking the electrons is called as reduction. Now this particular ubiquinone undergoes reduction. It forms ubiquinol. It forms your ubiquinol. Yes, it forms ubiquinol. And this particular electrons are giving. Electrons are sent here. It becomes ubiquinol. Now this electrons are sent back again here. This electrons can also be sent back to your UQ. Now, now from here the electrons are sent to your one electron is sent to your cytochrome. So sorry, sent to your complex number three. Electron is sent to your complex number three. But before we go to your complex number three, I want all of you to understand one point here. This First complex is called as your NADH dehydrogenase. Now this NADH dehydrogenase not only sends its 2H plus here, it also, it does its own work. It is self-sufficient. Sends two protons from your matrix region to your intermembrane space. Along with this 2H plus which comes from your NADH2, the complex itself sends in 
टू मोर H प्लस फ्रॉम योर मेट्रिक्स रीजन फ्रॉम द मेट्रिक्स रीजन योर साइटोक्रोम योर फर्स्ट कॉम्प्लेक्स सेंस इन टू प्रोटॉन्स सो इन टोटल इन टोटल वी हैव फोर H प्लस हियर इन टोटल वी हैव मनी फोर H प्लस नाउ दिस यूबिक्विनॉल राइट दिस यूबिक्विनॉल इज गेटिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन इट इज गेटिंग एनर्जाइज नाउ इट इज गेटिंग एनर्जाइज इट ऑल्सो it also takes up two protons it also takes up two protons from your matrix it captures the two protons in the matrix that's how it becomes 2qh2 now this 2qh2 is also this h2 is also sent to your this h2 is also sent to your complex number 2 2h plus is sent here 2h plus is also sent here that is the entire step on this side i hope this is clear i hope students till here it is clear i'll repeat again that is the first step is what in your complex number 1 the nadh2 undergoes oxidation when it is undergoing oxidation it is releasing the electrons and protons that electron is traveling to fmn from fmn it is going to fes from fes the electron is sent to your ub Quinone, which is a mobile electron carrier. These two protons are sent to your intermembrane space. What about these two protons? These two protons are sent to intermembrane space by the complex itself. The NADH dehydrogenase takes up two electrons or two protons from the matrix and it sends to your intermembrane space. That is the complex is doing. So in total we have the four H plus here. Now these two electrons go to your ubiquinone. Ubiquinone is a mobile electron carrier. It is taking electrons, means it is getting reduced. Yes, it is undergoing reduction. When it is undergoing reduction with the same energy, it is taking two protons from the matrix region. Reduced. Now the same two protons and one electron is sent to your third complex. It is sent to your third complex. Till here. clear till here it is clear now this part is done now let's understand what is happening in your second now the second cytochrome the second complex is called as your succinate dehydrogenate and succinate dehydrogenate it is also called as your fadh2 dehydrogenate it is also called as your fadh2 dehydrogenase succinate dehydrogenase or fadh2 dehydrogenase will take up this particular particular complex will take up from the matrix the fadh2 it will take up the fadh2 it is taking up the fadh2 now this fadh2 also undergoes oxidation fad plus when it is undergoing oxidation it is transporting the electrons yes sir electrons are sent here two electrons two electrons and two electrons are sent to again back to your ub quinol sent to ub quinol now again this ub quinol takes up electrons becomes uq h2 it is getting reduced it is getting from here it goes to here again it is getting reduced two electrons and the same way how it happened here it is happening here similarly this also sends one electron to your complex number 3 one electron is sent to your complex number 3 now what about the h plus in this case in the case of your complex 3 in the case of in the case of your complex 2 this h2 this h2 is taken up by your ubiquinone and it is sent to your complex 3 similarly how 2h plus was sent here 2h plus are sent here now you can ask me a question sir in this case the 2h plus was directly sent to intermembrane space why can't we send in complex 2 directly the protons here the answer is very simple because your complex number 2 is a complete inner membrane protein it is not a inter membrane protein you see this it is stopping here only this protein is not part of your intermembrane space it is only part of your inner membrane 
कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर टू इज ओनली ओनली पार्ट ऑफ योर इनर मेम्ब्रेन दिस इज नॉट कमिंग टू योर इंटर मेम्ब्रेन सो दिस इज द लास्ट पॉइंट हेंस योर प्रोटॉन्स कैन नॉट बी शॉर्ट इन टू इंटर मेम्ब्रेन स्पेस थ्रू योर कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर टू कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर टू इज ओनली हियर इट इज अ इनर मेम्ब्रेन द कॉम्प्लेक्स वन थ्री एंड फोर एंड फाइव आर इंटर मेम्ब्रेन प्रोटीन्स That's why the H plus is sent to ubiquinone. Ubiquinone will send two H plus here. Now all of you will might be getting one simple question in your mind, sir. We have two electrons here, two electrons here. But why are we only sending one electron? Yes, all of you might having that one doubt in your mind. Why are we sending only one electron? The answer is very simple. One electron is consumed in maintaining the cycle here. To maintain these two cycles. One electron is needed. Hence, only one electron is sent to your complex number three. Amazing! All of you know that. Now let's draw the electrons here. So in total, there are two electrons are sent here. Two electrons are sent here also, and from here, two electrons are sent here. Now, students, this is where the problem is. What is the problem now? You have Electrons are here, but I need to send these electrons to here. How do I send electrons from here to there? How do you go to school? From your house, you either take a bus, your auto, your parents drop you, bike something. There is basically a carrier to take up, take you to school. Similarly, or college, these two electrons. Are taken up by a mobile carrier. The mobile carrier called the cytochrome C. The cytochrome C is the mobile carrier. The cytochrome C will take up the two electrons. It will travel here, and it will. Cytochrome C will travel here. Cytochrome C, and it will release the two electrons. That is the function of your. cytochrome c it is a mobile carrier between your complex 3 and complex 4 that right there is a neat level question that is a neat level question now students i want all of you to understand one more thing 2h plus 2h plus so can i write here intermembrane space 4h plus is short here again 4h plus is short into your intermembrane space here also 4h plus here also 4h plus is short to your sent to your intermembrane space now where are the electrons electrons are here now what happens so these electrons are sent to your different centers copper centers copper centers now finally finally the electrons are taken up by i have told you the final electron acceptor the final electron acceptor in the case of your electron transport chain is none other than your mighty all mighty your oxygen half o2 plus 2h2 h 2h plus which releases your makes up your h2o which makes up the h2o the final electron acceptor is your oxygen that's where the electrons are going when this happens when this energy is sent here when let it sent here from the again from your matrix region 2h plus is sent to your intermembrane space into your intermembrane into your intermembrane space 2h plus is again sent to so in total how many protons in total we have 4 plus 4 plus 2 that is 4 plus 4 is 8 in total in your intermembrane in total your intermembrane in total there are 10 h plus 10 h plus are there in your intermembrane space in total there are 10 h plus now this 10 h plus here creates a potential gradient you have learned in chemio osmotic theory there is a creation of potential gradient every single time there is a creation of potential gradient this particular 10 h plus will enter your complex number 5 called as atp synthase and this particular protons will rotate they will completely rotate the f not they will rotate it and whenever the rotation happens and also with the help of f1 which has catalytic abilities it has catalytic abilities 
This conversion happens here. What happens here? ADP is converted to ADP is converted to your ATP. ADP is converted to your ATP here because of the H plus R sent. Because of the H plus here for proportional gradient, because of the H plus, which is going to your again back to your matrix region, ring is rotating, and hence ADP is getting converted to ATP with the help of protons. With the help of protons, this conversion is happening. Now, students, one of the important point which your NCRD also says here is important point NCRD also says here is 2H plus makes up 1 ADP. 2H plus makes up 1 ADP. Now, how many H plus we have? We had 10H plus here. Yes, sir, we had 10H plus in total. So, in total, we'll get 5 ATPs. In total, we'll get 5 ATPs. Now, out of this 5 ATPs, right? Out of this 5 ATPs, the 3 ATPs belong to your because of NADH. And the 2 ATPs because of your FADH2. Clear? Because of your FADH2. That is why we tell 3 ATP are produced by 1 NADH. 2 ATPs produced by your FADH2. Clear? Does anyone has a doubt here? Any doubt you can ask me right now. Any doubt you can ask me right now because this is your electron transport chain. Let me quickly tell you one more time. What is happening? Complex 1 dehydrogenase, complex 3 hydrochrome BC1, BC1 complex, then your complex 2 succinate dehydrogenase, which is also part of your Krebs cycle. Then we have your complex number. Complex number 4, cytochrome C oxidase. Then we have your complex number 5, ADP synthase. Now NADH is getting converted to NAD plus. That is oxidation is happening. Two electrons are sent here. And when they have two electrons are sent, they are going to your UQ. Ubiquinol is getting converted to your Ubiquinol. And when this is happening, totally 4H plus are sent to your inner mem intermembrane space. Two from your here two from here and two from your because of the matrix because of your so complex number one it is doing work on itself and it is releasing the 2h plus so in total there are 4h plus here from here and from here see here whenever there is succinate to fumarate when we are converting from succinate to fumarate FADH is produced yes sir and that FADH releases the protons here this is the electrons. Electrons are again going to UQ. UQ is getting converted to UQH. And electrons are sent to here. Huh? Can you see? Two electrons are sent here. From here also, electrons are being sent. And along with that, protons are also being sent. So protons are also being sent here. So this will have how many? Four protons. And one electron from here, electron from here. So in total, two electrons, two electrons are here. And four protons. Then electrons are taken up by your cytochrome C, which is a mobile electron carrier, which it takes it to your complex number 4. From here, electrons goes to your copper centers. Finally, the electron acceptor is your half O2 plus 2H plus, which converts to water. And when this is happening, 2H plus is again sent to your intermembrane space. So in total, how many we have? 4 plus 4 plus 2, 10 H plus are there and potential gradient is maintained. Now because of this potential gradient, because of this potential crop because of this potential gradient, potential gradient, this ring is rotating, F load is rotating and produces the ATP is produced. ATP is produced. What is the doubt? So complex C does not release 4, complex C does not release 4 extra H plus. Remember, complex 3 is releasing 4H plus only. Complex 3 is releasing 4H plus. That is, 2 is coming from here. 2 is coming from H plus, coming from here. 2H plus is coming from here. See this diagram. 2H plus from here. From matrix, ubiquinol is sending here. From FADH2, 2H plus is given to your complex 3. So in total, how many? In total, 4H plus is released. Because there is no NADH working here. There is no FADH working here. 
electrons and protons are being sent to your complex 3. Sent to your complex 3. Clear? Augustine clear? Is that concept clear? Does anyone has any doubt in electron transport chain students? If you're not understanding it one go, take your time. Write down this and watch the video over and over again until you understand the electron transport chain. Okay? Clear? Now, this was clear. 2H plus gives 1 ATP. In total, we have 10H plus. So, 5 ATP out of 5 ATPs, 3 belong to your NADH, 2 belong to your FADH2. See here? 2H plus, ATP is getting converted to ATP. Electron transport chain done and dusted. That's electron transport chain. Clear? Does anyone has any doubt in electron transport chain? You can ask me right now and I'll clear your doubt. Okay? Let me ask a simple question. Let's try to solve some questions. The electron transport chain is present in. Where do you find electron transport chain? Which part of your mitochondria do you find electron transport chain first? Let's do some quick questions. Let's do solve some quick, quick questions. Quick, quick questions first. Electron transport chain happens where? In the outer membrane? No. In the intermembrane space of mitochondria? No. The inner mitochondrial membrane? Yes. It happens in your inner membrane of your mitochondria. It happens in the inner membrane. Now, which of the following is an... Okay, leave this question. This is not out of your NCRT. The chemo-osmotic. The chemo-osmotic theory is based on... The chemo-osmotic theory is nothing but your... Uh, all the H plus going back to the matrix the main theory behind your chemiosmetic theory is nothing but your proton gradient because of the proton gradient whenever there is proton gradient forming electrons are going back up now can we do a respiratory balance sheet the complete balance sheet of entire respiration can we do once and i will tell you exactly from one molecule of glucose how many atp is being produced can we start? Can we start fast? Can we start? Students, if you have any doubt in electron transport chain, ask me right now or let me know in the comment section because there are so many confusion, so much of confusion be between electron transport chain and I have made it so easy. What, step by step we have written, step by step we have drawn. Okay? Now, respiratory balance sheet. Now, in first is glycolysis. Yes, sir. The first part of your respiratory balance sheet is glycolysis. Glycolysis. And we know in the case of glycolysis, in the preparatory stage, it is minus 2 ATP. And one NADH is giving. We have two. We have one NADH also. Yes, we have two NADH. We have two NADH. Two NADH. The two NADH is giving us. 6 ATPs plus at the end of your third in, in, in uh, at the end of your glycolysis we also have two ATPs but since it's double double so we have four ATPs so what is a 6 plus 4 is 10 10 minus 2 is 8 ATP yes sir the total of 8 ATP in your glycolysis I hope none of you should have any doubt here okay that is 8 ATP now what about link reaction? Link reaction which is also called as oxidative decarboxylation. In your link reaction we have 2 NADH. Yes sir, in link reaction I have seen there is 2 NADH is forming. Because in one link reaction, one pyruvate is getting converted. But we are talking about here one glucose. For one glucose, two pyruvate, two link reactions. So how many ATPs? In total we have again. 6 ATPs, 6 ATPs, 1 NADH is how many ATP? 1 NADH is nothing but your 3 ATPs, right? Now, the last one is your Krebs cycle. Last one is your Krebs cycle. So, in your Krebs cycle, in one Krebs cycle, how many NADH? In one Krebs cycle, there are 3 NADH. But that is for one pyruvate. 1 acetyl CoA. But remember, for one glucose, for one glucose, we have two pyruvates. So cycle has to go twice. So can I write 6 NADH? 
in one cycle we have three NADH but remember for one glucose the cycle is happening twice yes that's gonna right six NADH plus in one cycle we have one GTP but cycle is running twice because we have two mo one molecule of glucose will have two pyruvates so can I write two GTP plus how many FADH in one cycle there is one FADH but cycle is going twice so two FADH FADH2 we know one NADH will provide how many ATPs one NADH provides 3 ATP. So 6 into 3. Yes. 6 into 3 is how much? 16 is 18. 18 ATPs plus 2 ATPs here. Plus 1 FADH gives you 2 ATPs. So 2 2 size 4. 2 2 size 4. 4 ATPs here. So in total, just from Krebs cycle, we have how many ATPs? From Krebs cycle, we have 18 plus 2 is. 20, 24 ATPs, 24, 24 ATPs from Krebs cycle, 24 plus 6 is how much, 24 plus 6 is your 30, 30 plus 8 is 38 ATPs in total, 38 ATPs, in total we have 38 ATPs, clear, is this balance sheet clear? Is the balance sheet making sense to all of you? In total, from one molecule of glucose, from one molecule of glucose, we get in total of 38 ATP in aerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, we get 38 ATPs. And in anaerobic respiration, in anaerobic respiration, we just get 2 ATPs. Do you see the difference? Such a massive difference is there between aerobic respiration as well as anaerobic respiration clear i hope none of you should have any doubt here in regards with your glycolysis link reaction krebs cycle clear any doubt students you can ask me right now or let me know in the comment section any doubt regarding your balance sheet clear amazing the next one is a question next one is a question try to solve this question they have given you particular list A and list B. They have given you two lists. You need to match. Take one minute to answer this question. Take one minute. You can take one minute to answer this question. This is a neat PYQ. This is a neat PYQ right here. Twinkle is asking uh, two ATP were utilized. Here. Minus two here. Minus two. In glycolysis, two were utilized. This is for aerobic respiration. This is for only for aerobic respiration. And aerobic respiration, only two ATP formation is happening. Okay. Take one minute to answer this question. In oxalate decarboxylation, which enzyme is involved? In oxalate decarboxylation, one CO2 is released. Also, along with that, in oxalate decarboxylation, we have Mg+. plus. Along with that, we have something called as pyruvate dehydrogenase yes so a can be two yes a can be two now glycolysis is also called as your emb pathway yes now what about oxidative decarboxylation oxidative decarboxylation happens where oxidative decarboxylation that is jumping of electrons and the final electron acceptor is your oxygen that is happening in the case of your electron transport chain the tricarboxylic acid, tricarboxylic acid has an enzyme called as your citrate synthase that is in the production of citrate. So the first stable compound is citrate. In the formation of citrate, we in TCA cycle. TCA cycle is also called as your Krebs cycle. Called as your Krebs cycle, also called as citric acid cycle. Citric acid cycle so what, what should be the answer the answer should be option number a clear this is how you solve the questions now the next question is here based on your complexes the first complex is called as what the first complex is called as your NADH dehydrogenase yes 
What about complex number two? I told you complex number two is also called as your FADH2 dehydrogenase. FADH dehydrogenase. So A is three, B is four. Now complex number three. Complex number three is called as your cytochrome BC1 complex. Cytochrome BC1 complex. And complex number four is your cytochrome oxidase, which had your two copper centers. Remember the diagram. In diagram, I drew it. In case of your complex in complex number four, two copper centers were there. That is two copper centers. That is four. What is the answer then? A is A is three. A is three here. This is two are gone. A is three. Uh, B is B is four. This is the answer. Yes. Option number four is the answer. Clear. This is how you solve questions. The next question is identify the cytochrome which act as a mobile carrier. The cytochrome which act as a mobile carrier for transfer of electrons between the complex A and complex 4. Which is the mobile carrier? Remember students, ubiquinone is present between your complex number 3 and complex number 2. But your complex number, uh, between your complex number 3, between your complex number 3 and complex number 4, the mobile carrier which is present as your cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is the mobile carrier. Clear? Clear, 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 clear. All these are easy questions. Now, that was your EDC done and dusted. I showed you how the questions come. The last part of the chapter, the last but one, the last part of your chapter is nothing but your amphiboic pathway. Now students, I'll ask you a simple question. If there is a, in your house, your mother is making chapati. Your mother is making nice rice and rasam. Amazing. Or making chicken biryani or veg biryani, it is palau. But if there is no food in the house, if your mom does not, did not make any food in the house, what do you do? There are two things you can do. If your mother is not taking, not making any food in the house, two things you do. What do you do? You order the food from outside. You Swiggy or Zomato use, we order food from outside. Or we make Maggie. We make Maggie simple food where we make Maggie by ourselves. But what was that? We had a backup. What is the backup? If the main source is gone, we had a backup for it. That is, we Swiggy it, we, we use Zomato, we order food from outside. Or we make Maggie in the house. Similarly, students, in your body, inside your body, there's always a backup. There's always a backup. Whenever the complete carbohydrate is gone, complete carbohydrate is utilized in your body. That time, the backup material is utilized. What is the backup material? The backup material is nothing but your fats and proteins. The backup is nothing but your fats and proteins. The backup which I'm talking about here is fats as well as the proteins are the backup substances in your body. Every single time the complete carbohydrates is completely consumed, there is no more carbohydrates. That is when, that is when your body will tell you, we need a backup. Come on, we need a backup. The backup is nothing but your fats as well as the proteins. Fats as well as the proteins. That is the breakdown of fats. The complete breakdown of fats will happen. Students, remember, when we break down the fats, when we break down the fats, fats can be broken down into two different parts. Fats may be broken down, they can either be broken down into fatty acids, fatty acids or glycerol. Fatty acids or glycerol. Now this fatty acid or glycerol can be further broken down. For example, this fatty acid can undergo beta oxidation. This fatty acid can undergo beta oxidation. Undergo beta oxidation to produce your DHAP. Sorry, to produce your acetyl group. Acetyl coenzyme A. This particular fatty acid can undergo beta oxidation to produce your acetyl coenzyme A. Remember, and this acetyl coenzyme A can enter where? Can anyone in the chat tell me this acetyl coenzyme can enter where? First, in the chat. 
This acetal coenzyme may can enter your Krebs cycle. Enter your Krebs cycle, and here also energy is also released. Energy is also released, and that's how every single time there is no carbohydrates, what does the body do? Body will break the fat, and when the fat is broken down, students, when the fat is broken down into fatty acids as well as glycerol, fatty acid undergoes beta oxidation to form your acetyl coenzyme A. That same acetyl coenzyme A undergoes Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle will run. When the Krebs cycle is running, what happens? NADH and FADH is forming. NADH and FADH goes to your electron transport chain and ATP is produced. Everyone is happy? Yes. Similarly, this particular glycerol, this particular glycerol can undergo oxidation. Can undergo oxidation to produce your DHAP. Produce DHAP. That is dihydroxine, dihydroxy acetone phosphate, which was part of your glycolysis. Remember that. It was part of your glycolysis. This can also go undergo isomerization. Isomerization to form your 3 phosphoglyceric acid. 3 phosphoglyceric acid. Remember, in your glycolysis, we did isomerization. So, this particular glycerol can undergo oxidation to produce your DHAP, that is dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and also 3 phosphoglyceric acid. And this particular, both the substances, both of these molecules can undergo glycolysis. Glycolysis. And when it undergo glycolysis, what is produced? One second, students. It is gap. It is glycerol had 3 phosphate. This particular glycerol is uh, it undergoes glycolysis, which forms your pyruvate. This pyruvate will under will will form your acetyl CoA. This acetyl CoA will enter you again. Krebs cycle. It will enter the Krebs cycle. So whenever there is no carbohydrate to broken down when there is no glucose for the body to completely break down it uses the alternate methods what are the alternate methods for example fatty acids can be beta undergo beta oxidation to produce your acetyl coa the acetyl coa can jump into acetyl can can, can uh, jump into your krebs cycle similarly your glycerol can undergo oxidation to produce your dhap and glycerol dh3 phosphate when this GAP can undergo glycolysis to produce your pyruvate. This pyruvate can become acetyl CoA and it can enter your Krebs cycle. And that's how energy is produced, NADH is produced, FADH is produced, and similar similarly, your electron transport chain happens and ATP is finally done. Similarly, how you order for food from outside, you ate the food and you're done. This is called as your alternate pathway for your breakdown of your fats see here that is fatty acids can undergo beta oxidation to produce acetyl coa one fadh2 i think i forgot to mention this one fadh2 and also nadh this will undergo this will go to your krebs cycle krebs cycle similarly your glycerol undergoes oxidation to produce your dhap isomerization your gap that is or gpal what you can tell we will enter glycolysis pyruvic acid, acetyl CoA and Krebs cycle. That is your complete breakdown of your fats. Now students, how many of you heard it? How many of you heard something called as burning of fats? What is in the gym they tell you, right? We need to burn the fats. But students, remember the only time the fats from your body is going to be broken down when the complete carbohydrate has been consumed. When the, there is no carbs, less carbs, more protein, less carbohydrates, more fats are going to get broken down. Clear? The next one I have to tell you is respiration of proteins. In your proteins, remember, proteins can also break down. But this respiration of proteins mainly happens in the case of your plants. Respiration of proteins mainly happens in the case of plants. Because plants do not have fat. 
plants do not have a, a lot of fat yes so plants can undergo they completely break down the protein that is proteins are broken down that is with the help of protease into amino acids yes we have certain amino acids but sir how does this amino acids help us how do these amino acids can enter your glycolysis krebs cycle and everything answer is very simple the answer is deamination deamination is the answer if you look at your glutamic acid glutamic acid is a type of your amino acid when glutamic acid undergoes deamination it produces your alpha ketoglutarate and this alpha ketoglutarate will enter your krebs cycle again done and dusted and krebs cycle will run krebs cycle will produce us energy amazing sir what about aspartic acid yes sir similarly if aspartic acid undergoes deamination it produces your oxaloacetic acid oaa and this oxaloacetic acid can also join your krebs cycle yes they can join krebs cycle that's how alternate pathways work backup works in the case of plants the proteins are broken down to amino acids amino acids as your glutamic acid as well as aspartic acid they undergo deamination to produce your compounds such as your alpha ketoglutarate and oxaloacetic acid oa which enter the krebs cycle later on now students we know this is happening generally that is respiratory pathway substrates are there yes we have certain substrates that substrate is broken down completely substrate is broken down to produce the energy this is catabolic process yes this is catabolism but we just learned sir we just learned from simple amino acids and simple fatty acids and glycerol we are making substrates we are making we are having respiratory pathways isn't this a uh, anabolism yes sir we are taking simple substances and we are making complex substances this is anabolism yes this is anabolism this is anabolic in nature and this is catabolic in nature but in the starting i told you in the starting i told you respiration right respiration is a catabolic process but is it true the answer is no actually respiration is not a catabolic process respiration is a amphiboic pathway amphiboic process it is a amphiboic process that is in respiration in respiration simultaneously catabolism is also happening anabolism is also happening so students remember the definition of respiration changes here remember after 4 hours we are i'm telling you it is called as amphiboic pathway or amphiboic process it is not catabolism it is not anabolism clear all of you should know what is a amphiboic process if you look at your ncrt right now if you look at your ncrt carbohydrates is broken down to your simple sugars glycolysis whenever there is a glycolysis happening we get pyruvic acid pyruvic becomes acetyl coa in link reaction it joins the krebs cycle normal reaction but in the case of fats it is converted to fatty acids and glycerols they get converted to your dhap that is glycerol gets converted to dhap and your gap they then they then they enter the krebs cycle then they enter the glycolysis from glycolysis they enter the krebs cycle similarly your fatty acids can convert get converted to your acetyl coa acetyl coa can enter your krebs cycle similarly the proteins can make amino acids amino acids such as your glutamic acid aspartic acid and after deamination they can directly become your oaa or alpha ketoglutarate and they can directly enter you see they can they directly enter your krebs cycle they can directly enter your krebs cycle that is called as your alternate pathway also called as your amphiboic pathway understood everyone let's see a small question which of the following pathway is not an amphiboic pathway we just learned glycolysis is amphiboic because both can happen krebs is amphiboic electron transport chain is amphiboic in nature 
So the only answer here, which is not an amphiboic pathway, which is an anabolic process, that is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is not an amphiboic pathway, it is an anabolic pathway. Clear? It's an anabolic pathway. Now next question here from your NEED 2022. NEED PYQ here, solve the NEED PYQ. NEED PYQ. The fatty acids are connected with respiratory pathway through. I told you fats can be broken down into fatty acids and glycerols. Glycerols can become DHAP and your PGA while your fatty acids is converted to fatty acids is converted to first. Your fatty acids get converted to your acetyl CoA. Fatty acids get converted to your acetyl CoA. Remember this. Students, all these notes will be available to you on my telegram channel, on the telegram channel. All you need to do is remember this. Here, fatty acids get converted to your acetyl CoA. Fatty acids, acetyl CoA, glycerol, DHAP and GAP. DHAP and GAP. Clear? Acetyl CoA. Students, I am teaching you based on the questions which you can expect. That is my way of teaching. I do not want to teach you an extra over the ordinary concept which will not come in examination. No, I will not teach you that. Such as your how NADH actually is your 2.5, FADH is 1.5 ADP. I will not teach you all that. That will not come in your examination. I will teach you what exactly you need to study for your NEET examination. Okay? Now, here. Now, last part of the chapter. Can we start? Can I teach you the last part of the chapter which I will tell you exactly where the question will come? What is the last part of the chapter is nothing but your respiratory quotient. Respiratory quotient. What is respiratory quotient? Respiratory quotient is nothing. Respiratory quotient is nothing but your volume of CO2 released by the volume of oxygen consumed. How much of our evolution of carbon dioxide is releasing? And along with how much of And how much you are consuming the oxygen? That is, this quotient is nothing but your volume of CO2 evolved to the volume of O2 consumed. How much of O2 is consumed? And CO2 is evolved. Now, this I'll tell you what you need to remember here. One couple of values which I want you to by heart and remember in your brain. That is, in the case of your glucose, the complete oxidation takes place 6C and 6O2. So 6-6 six, six is there. So your respiratory quotient, respiratory quotient for your carbohydrate is 1. Remember that. The next point I want you to remember is in the case of your fats, in the case of fats, respiratory quotient is 0.7. That is more CO2 is there and less oxygen is there. Sorry, more oxygen is there. More oxygen, less carbon dioxide. So it is 0 0.7. Remember students. 0.7 and I want you to remember the example which is given here in your NCRT is tripalmitin. Tripalmitin is the example which is given in your NCRT. Remember that. That's all. That is for 0.7. Now students, they can also ask you other fats. Other fats from different chapters also. For example, in biomolecules, if they become very conceptual. In biomolecules, we have your tripalmitic acid. Right, try palmitic acid, palmitic acid and everything. That is also a fat. They can ask you a fat. They can also give you, here they will not ask you glucose. They will not ask you carbohydrates. They will tell you glucose. They will tell you sucrose. They will tell you a, basically a type of carbohydrate. They will never tell you carbohydrate. They will always mention the example. That is glucose. Here, try palmitin. Here, one example I've given you is albumin, which is a type of your protein. And proof of protein, the respiratory quotient is 0 0.9. 0 0.5 is the respiratory quotient. Clear? Now, if you look at your NCIT, this is what is given. 1 for your carbohydrates, that is for oxygen. Tripalmitin is given 0 0.7, that is example is given here. And for your proteins, it would be 0 0.9. 0 0.9 for your proteins. So students, can you solve this question? 
Can you solve this question fast? This is a neat PYQ, direct neat PYQ. Direct neat PYQ. Respiratory question for the value of tripalmitin is nothing but your zero point how much is it zero point seven zero point seven clear the next is the last, last is your homework question try to solve this homework question and then try to solve this homework question and we will stop the class today okay try, try to solve this homework question this is the homework question here hopefully this is visible if it's not visible next time i'll change it where is the respiratory respiratory electron transport chain located in the plants where is the atc is happening that is your homework question this also is a neat pyq neat pyq is the homework question that is the end of the chapter that is the end of your chapter respiration in plants so students remember one thing now we have completely done the chapter every single point of your ncrt all the way from the first two pages which we did for almost one hour one hour we did the first one hour we just did the first two pages done glycolysis done electron transport chain done krebs cycle done alternative pathway done balance sheet done students i want you to do one thing now promise me you'll do all of it tomorrow before studying anything open your ncrt and read this chapter listen to me very carefully before you do anything tomorrow morning when you wake up open your ncrt first thing you do is read the entire chapter once and then tell me if you understand the chapter or not once again and then tomorrow afternoon tomorrow afternoon sit with the previous your questions sit with um, uh, all the type of questions last seven years 10 year questions do it if you do not have a question bank if you do not have a book go to the description go to the description of this video right now you will find last seven year questions last seven year questions last seven year pyq last year pyq was available in today's description go do it and you will make sure that respiration plants is in your hands respiration plants is in your hands yes pinku i know who you are i've been seeing all of your chats hello gopika mom <laughs> gopika mom is here yes and students please let me know in the comment section how today's class was if you did not like any part of today's class also let me know that also also let me know that if you do not like any part of the class I have made sure we went very slow, very smooth for this chapter. Okay? Let me know in the comment section how was today's class. And also let me know if you have any doubts for this class in the comment section. We have gone completely detailed, done and dusted. ORBS is crazy, dude. Okay? Okay, I did not know that. So students, let me know in the comment section today how this class was. Because respiration is the most easy chapter. But the questions are difficult. Try solving the questions. And I'll see you on uh, Monday. I'll see all of you on Monday with your last part of your plant physiology. Okay then take care all of you. Tada, bye bye. Thank you so much for attending today's class. For last 4 hours you are here. Solve the questions. You will know the answer if you have understood my, my teaching. Okay. Yes, I switched from 2x speed to 1x speed for all of you. I could, have, I could have finished this entire chapter in two and a half hours if I went with my own speed. But it's become one, one speed for all of you. So students, go on. <laughs> go on for, go on watch session again if you want. Solve the questions. Take care students. Bye bye all of you. And tomorrow, go pick up my classes there tomorrow students. Not tomorrow. On Sunday. Sunday, go pick up my classes there. Attend that also. Okay? Bye-bye. Don't worry, I will do anatomy of flying plants also.